This podcast is brought to you by Onnit.com. What do you say? No shit. Come on. Don't worry about what I said. Start this fucking thing. <laughs> Go to Onnit.com and use code word CHURCH to get 10% off of all of their optimization products like Alpha Brain, New Mood, ShroomTech Immune, ShroomTech Sport. It's code word CHURCH to get 10% off. Go to irondragontv.com. Iron Dragon TV is a brand new Roku channel. has all of your favorite martial arts movies from Jackie Chan, The Ip Man, Tai Chi Hero. They have a whole bunch of on it videos. Go to on it, go to irondragontv.com and use code word Joey to get two free rentals. For all the oil and wax smokers out there, go to nailedatlife.com. That's Nailed It Life. They have the premier vapor pen on the market for all, for all the oil and wax smokers. And you get 20% off of your order if you use code word Joey Diaz. Just so everyone knows, I'm on a joint and edible and, and uh, mushroom, so. I just told you, don't rat yourself out, <laughs> It's the first thing you fucking do. You tweet it out. I didn't fucking tweet nothing. You tweet it all the time. No. Also, go to hitesigs.com. That's hit letter e cigs.com. Better tasting, longer lasting. The proof is in the vape. E-cigarettes and e-cigars. Use code word Joey's Church to get 20% off of your order. <laughs> Oh, shit. Just when you thought it was... The day the devil was fucked in the ass, lit on fire, and thrown into the same hole as Obama's in. Fuck him, that fucking cocksucker. What? It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. If you didn't know that, I'm reminding you. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. Oh, shit. It's the church of what's happening now. Jimmy Two Shoes Schubert. In the house. The Flying Jew. <laughs> Babby like Nick. What are you, fucking mixing this going under. Huh? No. Oh shit. It's like a sometimes. Cut that, we cut that leak. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? Monday, March 6th, the church of what's happening now. Stay black or go fuck yourself. It's a beautiful fucking day to be alive. How you guys doing today? What's the story with you? What's the story with me? There is no story. Stop looking at the board. I'm talking to you. What's happening? How was your weekend? It was great. It was great. We uh we didn't do much. It was uh just Paul and I we watched Black House of Cards, which is okay, not as good as the first two se- uh, seasons. And then we just went to the gym. And I, I started doing weights, not much, just but a little just to get your joints greased up. Right, yeah, just just to do uh, just a, uh, with dumbbells, and then I I did one machine where you like lean back, and then uh, they had I don't know what it's called, but it's the the bar that you put the weights on, but they have weights already like permanently put on it. Okay, and it was like fifty pounds. I did some curls and. I called you this morning. We talked for like fifteen minutes. It was really cool. And it's yeah, just you, need, you know what you need to do. You need to start doing some shrugs, where you hold the dumbbells in your hand and you shrug, and that way, when you're confused, you look really massive. Like, hey, how do I? Go? I don't know how you get there. <laughs> how do you look really massive when you're confused? It's a little workout. No, it's good that you're doing this, brother. I'm fucking happy that uh, you're giving everything a try. You know, you could just do the elliptical so long before you lose your fucking. Oh mind. my god, I, I, I still do it. But it's uh, it's good to do something, hard. man. Yeah. And lift first. Okay. When you start lifting, you lift first, and then you do the the, the cardio because oh. then you burn more gly- glycogen or something. There's a guy, Jason, who came to the shows in Minneapolis. Fucking guy's like 50. He's huge. Really? He looks like a million bucks. And we we're talking about dieting, and he goes, always do your cardio after the weights because you, now you're going to be burning the fat even fucking quick. And then he goes, and right when you get out of there, that's when your body needs sugar. Because as soon as you walk in the gym, if you eat a Twinkie, nothing will happen to you. You won't gain an ounce. Your body burns the fucking sugar right away. Right after the gym. And Rogan was telling me, he goes, when you do a protein shake after you work out, put a tiny bit of sugar in it. Really? Your body needs that sugar. Supposedly, yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know much about this. There's a lot of rules like that. There's and a I, ton of I rules. I just have no Dude, idea what all, they are. It's all that. And it's all that. I mean, you know, everybody, can, you, there's some guy. Do you want me to tell you what I saw on Groupon? If you go to Valley Village, North Hollywood, there's a plan that's three hundred and fifteen dollars, Lee, and they'll give it to you for ninety nine dollars. Whoa! There's nutrition, and weights, and everything. One shot deal. Let me tell you something. If you're not going on Groupon you're before you spend any dough, like anything, they have everything on. That's why I got the lo- the, ta- the, the 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 fucking laser deal to burn my toenails off. <laughs> Wait, no, yeah, I got they the- have everything. I got, I got an hour. I got uh, four hours of stretching. Where you want to see a guy that stretches you out? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. telling you, I'm dude, telling one you. of the best things I've ever done because I'm not a flexible guy. Did you go? Yeah, the guy's amazing. Where is it? Here in Studio City. No, it's in Beverly Hills. Beverly okay. Hills, just right over the hill. 
But the guy works with you for an hour, breaks a lot of stuff. You get off an airplane, you go in there and stretch for an hour. I'm telling you, man, it's great. And I'm day 10, no smokes, by the way. Congratulations, yeah. my brother. So I'm, uh, You've been going back and forth with this no smoking for years. And what people understand is for a guy like you, after you get off stage, you yeah. go back to your room. It's not even, it's something if you could control it, though. Like if you didn't smoke in the daytime and just smoked after six. Yeah. Once you do a blast, though, they ain't no bringing you back. <laughs> you smoke like the a, fucking camel. It's like that lyric of that Bob uh, Bob Seger song. Smoke the day's last cigarette. Oh, my Remember God. Remember what you said? You know. you know, I used to smoke two packs of camels a day. And after I'd pick up a gram of blow, I'd stop at the 7-Eleven on Sunset <laughs> right there, and I'd get two more packs of camels. And I'd go home and smoke the fucking Two packs in two hours with a fucking grime of blow. Wow. Just chase cigarette after cigarette. My blood pressure had to be three fucking fifty over. Uh, glad those days are over, right? <laughs> I'm glad. It's amazing. We survived them, bro. We're on the right side of the grass. What's the matter with you today? You're Nothing right. is the matter. When when did he start smoking cigarettes? We I never really talked about that before. When I was thirty one years old. When I, no no no. Even older. I was thirty three. Yeah. Whoa. I, I didn't start till I was about twenty. When I moved to Los Angeles, I yeah. went to the comedy store. That's that's the same time I started. Same you just, and I, I was the type of guy you could not get in the car. I couldn't go in the car with you if you smoked. I would get dizzy from the smell. Yeah, my mom's the same way. I had to overcome all that shit, and that's why I did it. I was sick and tired of being. I would, I, I would quit jobs. I had to touch an ashtray. Like when I was a bartender, if I had to clean an ashtray out, it's not gonna work out for you. <laughs> I didn't even like touching it. That yes, touch on my hands, yeah, I didn't like, like it at all. Yeah, but you imagine you see that ashtray and you fucking go, that shit's going on inside my lungs. You go, fuck, oh what am I? God. I mean, that's what I wonder what the inside of my lungs look like. And I have, I've been on and off. It's like you know, it's but this time I'm off for good. And I know, like I quit for six or seven years, and then I picked it up again doing a movie. Yeah, in a crazy on a movie set, you just get bored to pieces, and you well, go, give me one that, of those. It's a good thing that shit's not addictive, huh? Yeah, <laughs> fuck, it's uh. But it's weird how I put them down. Like now, it's going to be uh, three years in November. Good for that. you. That's I remember. Great. I remember when you quit. It was One right when when yeah. she found out about Mercy. Right? No, it was Thanksgiving. I went to a kid's house and I didn't smoke all day. And I went to this guy's house and I bought a pack of cigarettes at six o'clock at night. Yeah. When I left at eight o'clock, there was four cigarettes left. Wow. No drugs. Yeah. Drinking sodas and just telling stories, getting excited. You know, that's part of the patois. When you sometimes when you start smoking, like one thing I liked was uh, smoking weed and then writing jokes while smoking a cigarette because you're almost on stage. Okay. You're almost... Yeah, it's like it has a... You're smoking a cigarette. Something. Gives you a timing like in your Something head or whatever. Something in your you know? head, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. Pretty interesting shit. Well, I remember when we first started working together, you were still smoking cigarettes and you oftentimes would have like two hits, throw it away, go walk somewhere. Like you weren't smoking the entire pack. No, you? no. I don't it was, like, it was interesting. I don't like a cigarette after three quarters, then I throw it out. Yeah. Like those people that put it out and save it for later, I want to shoot those people. <laughs> they drive me fucking crazy. It's just a fucking cigarette. Just right? smoke the whole fucking thing and knock it off. Or smoke, take your puffs and then flick it. I used to smoke those uh, American spirits. It took you fucking two days to smoke one of those things. And they really taste like ass. I don't there's give a fuck. There's nothing in it. Yeah, yeah there's nothing. Nah, you smoke you're Winston. Gonna... You smoke Winston. That thing fucking burns in 20 seconds. Oh, my God. Two a big Winston, a Camel Light, a Marlboro Light. <laughs> Those fucking American spirits, they say, you know, people get confused. Like, I'll smoke American sp spirits and not get cancer. Right. You're still going to get fucking cancer. Yeah. You're going to get Did cancer. Do you ever roll your own cigarettes? No, no, no. That's too fucking barbaric. That's just too fucking barbaric for me. You know, when I was in Boulder County Jail, that's what they give you. They give you free uh, tobacco and you can roll up pack, joints. Yeah. And I wasn't smoking that. And people were smoking them. And I'm like, this is crazy. Smoke them without a filter. I just went to the weed store. Now they have glass filters for your joints. Which look pretty fucking cool. Well, I got to tell you, glass filters. I mean, if you're gonna smoke any of that stuff, it's better to smoke it out of glass than metal. You know? What does that do? I've never because I've I've seen people put like little paper filters at right. the end of so joints. Now, I don't now, really know what they, yeah. does. It even do anything? Well, it's just for people to be cool. Like, look at me. I put a filter in. It. I'm sure you did. <laughs> These fucking momos. But now they have glass, and it's it holds good. You know, listen, I'm so old school. When you smoke pot, just smoke like they did in Woodstock. Mm -hmm. If you can't smoke like they did in Woodstock and joints, you're doing something fucking wrong. Okay, somebody shows up with a pipe and some hash. I like all that stuff, too. But they just get outlandish. It just gets out of control. It's like a fad. There are always going to be papers, and there's always going to be motherfuckers who just smoke with a paper. But yeah. then, you know, the, the, the new Pepsi generation, they want to be cooler than the next guy. 
those Doug Benson dudes, his friends, dude, they want to be cool dude, in the dude, next Dude, day. I will tell you, man, uh, those vaporizer sticks, that, I mean, I, with the wax and the oil, that's pretty cool. You just hit that. Thing oh, yeah, you know, that, all no. that stuff is great, but it doesn't replace that fucking joint. No, there's nothing like that. You it. understand When me? you could get a fucking yeah. lid, when you could get a lid of the fucking Mexican brown shit, you could roll 20 fucking joints that I'd sit on the front lawn in high school, fucking unload them all for 20. Unload those fucking things, but it's. Uh, bro, hand roll, bro. It's, it's like the e-cigarette. You e e smoking Marlboro Reds. What's an e-cigarette going to do for you? Yeah. I ain't going to do shit. I can't wait till I have electronic cocaine. That's what I'm waiting on. <laughs> electronic cocaine. You snort it and you electrocute yourself and you go to bed. That's it. That's it. I can't. <laughs> Every day they got a new electronic something. Wait. Electronic heroin. Electronic cocaine. <laughs> electronic wait, cocaine. Wait, bro, it's, it's just around. It's the corner. just around the corner. It's just around There's the some fucking corner. nerd right now in his basement, <laughs> cutting up lines of coke, looking for investors. He's got an idea. Oh, listen, here's what happens: you do it and oh you hide God. in the closet. And you tear up your money. It's a no, same feeling. You hide in the you hide in the closet. Uh, and now you can hold on to a light bulb and turn it on like Festa. <laughs> that's what it is. You snort coke and you become electric. Like that's the fucking new thing. Wait, electronic meth, electronic fucking everything now. Yeah, What's up, Lisa? Hey, yeah, so yeah. Quiet. Don't don't. Doesn't anybody just do anything? No, anymore? nobody wants does to. Is it do all going to be documented? Everything. I will say this though. Spring and speaking of that, I'm glad we didn't fuck grow up. Didn't have all the social media and shit around when we were fucking oh, partying. I would have been you dead. Fucking kidding me? Out of control. Did Did you see that thing about the the kids in the frat singing that racist song? I heard something, but it's just, it's stupid. It's like and it happens all the time. There's all these videos out of. People, whenever they're going to get in a fight, like these high school kids, they film it and they put it up on YouTube, and then they get in trouble. I like I, I don't understand taping that horrible shit you're doing and thinking it... Like, when I was in high school, the stuff people got in trouble for was putting pictures of you with beer up on Facebook, like idiots. But now, people are putting whole fights up on YouTube. Dude, you know what? I've, I did. I love... Fuck all that shit. I mean, just even take... I mean, taking pictures of your food. I mean, just fucking... Who are you? Fucking... It's a meal. Just fucking eat the thing. You know? You're not fucking any legal. That's why you can't do nothing, guys. Like, I don't, I couldn't imagine being 22 in today's world. Like, half the fun no. is taken Man. away because there's always little fucking cunt with a camera that has to take it out and tape shit. Put the fucking thing away. They're, they're, I cursed whoever put a camera in a phone every day of my life. <laughs> every day. Every time I see a fucking jerk off taking a picture, I think of whoever put the camera in a phone. I go, I can't wait till they catch you getting your dick sucked by a black midget. And you're going to see the mistake you made, you stupid <laughs> motherfucker. Because you didn't think right. And now all these idiots are going to take them out for everything. And I'm happy for some things. But some things are just let... No, there's... Dude, I mean, I'm, I'm not even fucking kidding you, bro. I mean, not, a, not any fucking pictures, but everybody jumps online. They got to fucking yelp. Like, look, just eat your motherfucking food and shut the fuck up. Nobody needs your yelp. Like, it's anybody's going to read... Like, listen, I wouldn't believe a fucking yelp yeah. if you fucking paid me. I have three or four people right. that I know that when they come to me and they go, dog, come here for a second. <laughs> I went to this restaurant the other day because I know these people because they're the type of people that aren't impressed by glam. Yeah. There's people who are impressed with the, the with the meal, with the sprouts on top. <laughs> I'm going to pay $54 for a piece of fish this fucking big yeah. to eat with a bunch of Gentiles so I could be seen. No. I never, first of all, the crew I hung out with always we were professionals in the lunch special. Remember when you moved, when we were friends? Where would we go? Hoy's Walk. Hoy's Walk. Okay. Hoy's Walk. Hoy's I told Walk. them. The best special in town. I hunt down the special. Okay? Forget all that glam and all that shit. That's for fucking jerk-offs. All that shit. Dude. Yelp. All that shit. I won't fucking take. Listen. The other night, and I love you, Lee, to death, uh, but you don't, you're done with me when it comes to movies. The other night, I watched that fucking. <laughs> what? That chef movie yeah. with John Favreau. You didn't like that? The f what would happen the first 50 minutes? Let's break it down. What happened the first 50 minutes? Nothing. Nothing. Show him cooking. I don't want to see John Farrow cooking. He went, you know, the chef. It was an all star cast up front, five fucking stars in the first 50 minutes. My wife finally got up and said, Wake me up if something good happens. I just put Sons of Anarchy and tapped out. Yeah. Would they. Look, it's a simple little fucking movie. You know what but I love? But when did it start? What time did it start? When did it fucking come to life? It, After, it wasn't that, even about the food truck. It's I about watched. his relationship with his kid and all that fucking Listen, shit. Listen, I want to see a relationship with a guy joining the Boy Scouts, all right? <laughs> I don't give a fuck about some fake fucking Listen, movie. I got a fucking 72-inch fucking television with a fucking Blu-ray DVD player. Do you? Show me some fucking blood. Yeah, no. I, don't, I don't watch a guy. I don't tune in to watch a guy fucking cook. 
the, the, I want to see explosions. Doug Stanhope about growth. 10 years ago said a statement at the improv that I left and I didn't agree with him. And today, if I see him, I will shake his hand. He said yeah. that America, we're getting fed mediocrity. He's right. And we're accepting it as great. Dude. Yeah. You know, and I told my wife today, we were talking this morning, I go, let me ask you something. 30 years from now, when fucking The Exorcist comes on, what would you rather watch? The Exorcist from 1973, one of the greatest years for movie ever. 73 yeah. was the best year movie. That was like a three-year Or Chef. Trip. Yeah. Or Chef. You yeah. can't. There's no Comparison. There's no relevance in these movies. Yeah. Nothing's going to make you go back. Well, John Favreau won eight Academy Awards, a director yeah. of that. Nothing's going to make you go back to that film. Yeah, but you're right because I'll tell you something. At some point I was going, I'm just glad this is an, it's a little independent feature. And sometimes you go, yeah, I mean, he does the Iron Man movies so he could break off and do this. I granted it fell a little short on a couple of characters, but I, I, I enjoyed it just for the fact that I, I couldn't. I'll watch it again. I couldn't sit there for four, 50 minutes. See, I'm a fucking cook. Nothing I like to, I like I like cook. cooking too. I'm f fucking 300 pounds. <laughs> I like to eat. I'm the opposite of you, cocksucker. <laughs> they showed 10 scenes where he's just cooking. It's not even his hand. The no. grilled cheese. I need to see that. <laughs> I need to see you make a fucking grilled cheese for, me. for that fucking half a fag kid. I need that shit. <laughs> Come on, guy. I Come on. But how great shit. was the fucking the the chick from fucking uh, the Family Show? What's I watched the beginning of it. She looked great. What's her name? What's her uh, name? Sophia Vergara. Yeah. Oh my god, bro. You know no, I mean, it what? It's not the best movie. Like I, I told you to see Kingsman. I'm, 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 I didn't tell you. I told you it wasn't, wasn't going to be terrible. So I'm assuming you saw it and you hated it. I didn't see nothing. Now oh, okay. you lost faith for another ten years. Now oh no, can't. but Chef. I don't know. It was. I of, of course you can't compare it to. To Scarface or but to what the my Exorcist. point is, it's mediocrity, and we're paying for that. And we're leaving that going. That was okay, even though deep down inside we want to go. That fucking sucked. Well, dude, look, well, let's, here's that sucked. And, and and I've seen this since I was a kid. I saw this, but now I see it. You know, when I was a kid, I hung out with Otto Sauer. I told you guys this, and Otto Sauer used to go to every concert. And I'd be at the concert behind Otto Sauer. He was one of those kids that got the T-shirt and told you how good the concert was. Otto, the sound right. sounded like shit. Even the fucking people were running out of there. But Otto was what time. Nobody could come to you and really tell you the truth because they feel bad about spending a short 20. Right. That's my point. Well, yeah, I mean, do you think the difference is that there's a lot, are there a lot more movies coming out now? Because I've thought about that for yes, a while. Yes, yes. Because there, there's three, four new movies out every week. Every week. And, and six of them. Right. Six or seven of them and what comes out on DVD that you'll never see, you know. And those are probably the better movies. Right. And I think that's what it is. I think it's... Yeah, they're definitely. It's not as good as the '70s, which was amazing. Yeah, but dude, but look, it, it's the best of the wor of what we got. You're gonna so, tell me? I, I had ten people look me in the face and say Birdman was the best movie they ever watched, and I was in till the bird showed up and started talking. <laughs> then I gotta go. That's it. That's it. Yeah, but I, there's you know, no. That, 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 there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> Once the bird showed up, me and my wife looked at each other like this is not good. Uh, go get a fucking I sausage. Know. You know, but but I talked to Hollywood people. Like the first guy, I know who the first. I ain't gonna say his name. The first guy that called me and said that movie is the greatest fucking movie. I've yet to talk to him since then because <laughs> I know somewhere in the conversation I'm gonna go. Listen, next time you send me to a bum fucking movie, we're gonna have a big fucking problem. Okay. <laughs> Well, listen, I mean, the first time you watch it, it does have this effect. I've watched it twice. I've watched it twice. So the first time you see it, the, the, the drums by themselves, I mean, I thought that was really unique. Is the, and, and, and the way the camera was used with those shots, those long shots, I'm going, you know, granted, the bird shows up and fucking ruins the movie. But the movie is called Birdman. You should be expecting to see a bird at some point in the fucking movie. I thought he had like a pigeon or he said <laughs> pigeons at the park. Or maybe he had a fucking parakeet. <laughs> I don't want some life-size bird showing up next to this fucking moron. I just paid nine fifty. I got a babysitter. Well, what, Me and my wife are out to have a good time. Yeah, and but I, you I know need why, this aggravation. Yeah, but you know why you pay nine fifty, Joey? To get away from reality. When else are you going to see? Why? Your... No, no, no. Uh, I, if I, I get away from reality when I eat one of those stars and I eat a piece of mushroom. <laughs> I don't need to watch a bad fucking movie. To take me away from me. It had elements. It had it had great elements, and but I not think, enough to win an Oscar. Uh, not, not it wouldn't even have survived. Dude, did you see uh, Theory of Everything? The kid that plays the uh, um, Hawk of Stephen Hawkins. Have you seen that? I gotta go see that now. No, Two no. hours of a guy in a wheelchair. <laughs> that's what I want to go see. That, that's what I need. <laughs> I called Einstein yesterday. You know my friend Einstein. He uh, yeah. gave me a fucking thirty minute of beating about his friend. <laughs> 
who got hit by a truck. This guy's got the saddest life. First, he went to 9-11. He got blown up. He lost his job. Then they gave him 400. Is that all he lost at 9-11? He, he should count job. himself lucky. Right. He just he lost, lost his job. job. A lot of other people then they lost gave a lot him $400 a week to live. Then he caught a pneumonia. Then he caught nymphobia. Then he caught chlamydia. And then one day he was walking down the street. He got hit by a car and he woke up and his leg got lost. Then something else happened. Then his wife left him. Jesus. Then the cat blew up. And then meanwhile, and the I'm dude, sitting there. Then the dude gets pyorrhea, disease of the oh gums, my God. and it fucking diarrhea in the same week. That's it did not I go, Einstein, give me the GoFundMe. I'll <laughs> drop 100. Don't ever call me again. Because now i got to go cut a chicken and set off as I, a Santeria guy. No, I love that, though. But the GoFundMe, that's the other thing. Every fucking time I try to get off the fucking information highway off ramp, there's a 20-year-old who wants to sell me his virtual bag of oranges. Hey, it's the cooler with the blender in it. Stop fucking putting, like, common I shit I don't give together. those motherfuckers none. I give no. them the finger. Dude, there was that's a guy what I wanted do. you to I go beat the me. horn. I give them the fucking <laughs> finger. That's it. And I'm a pussy. I give it to them as the light turns green. I don't give it to them when the light turns red. <laughs> but, but everybody wants you to go fund them now. Go fund me. What did you got? These are sneakers that play Guns N' Roses songs while you jog. You know what? Go fuck yourself. I don't need this I'm shit. Like, oh, my you, God. It never well, ends. You're not fucking Bill Gates looking for seed money. You're a fucking, you know, a douchebag that wasn't going to... Now I know why these young kids are joining ISIS. Huh. Because there's nothing... To, <laughs> I got to deal with these fucking dummies all day. Agents that don't know how to pitch you. Some fucking oh. kid on Gmail that wants to do... I want you to go to Canada. How many times I got to tell you I can't go to fucking Canada? Now they won't let Chris Brown in. You know the chance of letting me in? He just beat up Brianne. I beat up 50 fucking people and got felonies. They ain't gonna let me in the fucking whatever. I lit a fucking crack hole on well, her wig on fire. They definitely got that on file some fucking way. Well, <laughs> well they do let... now. You're writing on yourself. They you, know that's already. the entire podcast Listen, is you writing on yourself. You know how many people? I went to my background check thing. I've had about 2 million background checks since <laughs> this podcast started. Do you dude, know that? Dude, you've read War and Peace? Get nothing. Sit down and read the background check. That's right. Bro. I had one done. When you do like fucking Last Cow was Standing, they send you the fucking thing. It's like this big. It's like fucking 60 pages of shit. They looked into your life. They looked into Did everything. they really? No, they got to. You're going on fucking national television. You're representing NBC. You are an employee of NBC. They do a background check on you. That guy fucking told me I still owe milk money from second grade. I mean, they they fucking have everything. They have a file this big when you do. When they send it to you after they go check it out. It's crazy. Are you serious? Oh. Yeah, they want. Somebody sent me a questionnaire once for the Biggest Loser, oh, yeah. and I filled it out just as a goof, and I sent it back. Oh my god! Oh, but NBC still hires me for regular shit. It's yeah. that shit they run you. They want references, and they fucking call too. Well, no, because it's not like for us because we're in show business. We get it. We're kind of been vetted already. But you know, some of these other people are fucking. They were. Two weeks ago, they were America's Most Wanted, and now they're on fucking Dancing with the Stars or whatever you got. So for those reality shows, they really do a thorough. Now, let's say you went on the last comic standing and you had a really bad background like me. They're not going to hire you? No, they would hire you, but it would become part of the story. Oh, no, I don't give a fuck. No, yeah. You know, you live well, there's the, I mean, there are some stories of someone doing no, porn or like just terrible, not terrible stuff, yeah, but I think that's more for reality for shows. Yeah, we're, no, no, you know, you'd be doing, they don't want you to be doing porn. You know, like Moonlighting is a porn star, and now all of a sudden you're on last comic fucking last middle act standing. I fig I feel that I went to do uh, Nickelodeon uh, uh, Super Ninjas, and as I'm and as I'm reading, right before I go to read, they slip me something. I look at it; it's a background check. I'm like, I'm gonna do this after the audition. I'll go in there and fuck their world up, and then give them this on the way out of the audition. Right. So I went in there, I fucked their world up, and I come out. And I asked the lady, "What do you want a background check?" She goes, "Come here." Because we caught one of our producers in that thing, that show, Leave It. Remember that show, uh, To Catch a Predator? Oh, oh right, To Catch yeah. a Predator, yeah. It was a guy from Nickelodeon got caught. So Nickelodeon was in deep shit. So I had to do a background check. When I gave him the background check, I said, it was nice meeting you. Because I'll never see you again. <laughs> sure enough, they gave me a recurring role, three episodes, with the background check. And yeah, but they, they, they're, looking for, they're looking for fucking, if you get caught in the park with a fucking whip. Yeah, and a, and a Nazi helmet with a bag of candy. You know what I'm saying? With little German boots to give the kids. <laughs> you know they ain't looking for you if you no, sold a kilo to no, undercover no, cop. No, no, that's that's fucking all. You know, you yeah. know, DUI, big deal. You know, tax lead, nothing. You know, it's like that scene. Just want to make sure you're not finger banging. A it's like that scene in Easy Money. Look at that kid. Look at the kid. Look at the way that man bounces that kid on his lap. That's love. And all of a sudden, the lady comes with a cop. Excuse me. Excuse me, is that your kid? And he goes, no, he just jumped on my lap and started bouncing up and down. And the cop goes, let me see some ID. He goes, it's in my rain jacket. That's a classic. But it's not Rodney and Joe Pesci talking. 
it's over there. Nobody's ever done that before. Right. They're in the conversation, and all of a sudden you hear with the pervert. Rodney's like, look at the way the kid, look at the way the father bounces oh, that kid on his left. And then left. they cut to up close to and the, they, what's going on. And the on. cop comes with a lady and goes, what happened? What's going on here? You know this kid? He goes, I don't know this kid. He just came over and started jumping on my lap. And the cop goes, let me see identification. He goes, it's in my other rain jacket. Oh, that's that's the joke. And you, you see Rodney looking at fucking uh, Joe Pesci. Wow, that's great. So what's up with you? You already seen the devil, cocksucker? You're sitting yeah, there. Yeah, you gave me... What 125 I, milligrams plus. That's 25. No, it's not. That, those are the 25. At least give ones. me the credit when I get when I do it. Those are the 25s. No, they're not. There's no there's no 25s. Maybe they. Maybe I, they're I talked stupid. to a guy. I have a, a you, source now. You talked to a guy who uh, who knows how many milligrams are on these. They and don't then fucking no shit. And That's then we had the, the the mushroom stuff, which is fun. That's he fun. talked to the guy behind the guy behind the guy. There's always a guy. How was the last comic? Uh, ex- experience for you from head did they contact you and say come well down? you know what the thing is man i just i, I was uh i just you know it was like one of a th- i had like a three a day thing i had an audition for uh a, a tv show i had a fucking radio interview in a downtown and i had to swing, swing back and i just thought well fuck it i'll just do it i i just, it was just like a busy day and i was i'll just stop popping and do it just for a goof and they invited me to be part of it and i said oh, okay well it's an opportunity to just see what kind of exposure you get from it and and, uh, you know, I already put David Tell's comedy on the ground in the can, so I knew. And so I did that. They invited me to 100. They invited me to be top 28. They invited me to the top 10. I said, fucking, this is great. I had a, I, it, was, it was fun, man. It was great. And I just saw Wanda Sykes at the sushi joint by my house, and she came up and she gave me a big hug. I mean, it was a success for them. They brought it back. I thought what they wanted to do was, was kind of kind of respect it a little more this year. I thought they, they, they wanted to put the comedian's display on process. It wasn't the, the, the comedian's process on display. It wasn't stupid. I mean, they kind of, you know, made you get there with, then then it became Real Housewives of the Last Comic Standing. But still, I mean, I thought it was, it, they did it better this year than they've done in previous years. That was my, and uh, it was good, man. It was great to be part of it. There was a lot of, a lot of guys. Rocky Laporte's been doing it forever. DC Benny's been doing it forever. You have uh, Nikki Carr's been doing it for a long time. Rodman's been doing it for a long time. You guys, guys like Lachlan Patterson and Monroe Martin, you know, and Ada Rodriguez. I mean, you know, you, these people have been around for a while doing it, you know. So it was it was nice that everybody everybody got a bump out of that and 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 and, and uh, everybody's out there you know where, whereas before some guys are going I got to go to fucking real estate school and these guys are now got a little second second win so it's good it so really I, th- I think it's good for comedy I think it was good for stand up comedy and I think like people's careers have their ups and downs I think stand up comedy has its ups and downs and I think it's on an upswing now and it just happened to premiere the same weekend that uh, David tells comedy. Uh, underground mm-hmm. premiere, which was great. I loved the way. I mean, he had those shows that were shot with GoPros, the audience holding GoPros. I thought, boy, how you talk about reinventing the wheel and reshooting the show. I mean, you, that was a show you watched and you felt like you were in the audience. And David Tell, dude, one of the funniest dudes out there working. I mean, just he just kind of reinvented the wheel and he took charge of it and he edited all those episodes. He said, I was going to let Comedy Central edit it. They, they look at comedy the way Romanian orphanages look at children. <laughs> Fucking comedy central there, Dude, just redundant. no. But he he oversaw the editing and said, "Hey, I just got done it, and it looked great, man." It I mean, great. yeah. And he it, did. The, the thing is, I was talking to somebody else from, uh, that had something going on with Comedy Central, and they said that when the whole experience was over, they were in shock how much they didn't know, how much they ended up doing themselves. If not, nobody else would do it. And I explained to them, I said, "There's so many people in this town that think that they depend so much on their managers and their agents." And I was raised a different way that you yeah. have one shot. Yeah. I give you in the old days, I used to give you one shot. Dog, call Warner Brothers, find out what's going on in that row. I'll call you in a half hour. What's going on? Well, I called and left a message. You're done. You're done. That's it. Message. Message. You're done. <laughs> you know, before the computer thing came, there was a time I had three agents. Once once Gatlin left. No, I know. You were working, bro. I was working them. I had three agents on paper that did not know about each other. And I would see, and it taught me something. As I was scamming, it also taught me how they saw me. So I would see how this guy would call me with a distinct, different look. And I knew that this guy and this guy had seen the same breakdown. Yeah. But this guy saw something different. And, and I learned how different agents saw me. Yeah. And that was very interesting. But there's a guy I bumped into, I swear to God, at, at, a, at a Marie E.T. about a month ago. His name is Greg Mayo. Great guy. The guy had been here 30 years. Uh, Greg Mayo. Just Greg Mayo. Yeah. He had an office in Ventura. He was a one-man show. 
He started at ICM in the 70s. And like in 87, he says, I'm done with ICM and all these big agents. I'm going to take 40 people and I'm going to book theater and character actors. I happened to bump into the guy at a gay gym, Christy Miller. Oh, yeah. Gave me a free pass to Gold's when she was a manager at the Gold in, in Gower. And right. They gave oh, me yeah, I used to go down there. That's the gay, uh, nice people. One night on the way, he started talking to me. I could tell he wasn't trying to hit on me. Right. He just asked me, who's your agent? You have a nice look to you. And right away, I was a little apprehensive, and I met him up at his <laughs> office, and the guy turned out to be a great agent. I'll tell you how great of an agent he was. He took a Sam Weissman. Sam Weissman was a big-time comedy uh, director when we got here. He's yeah. done now. But he directed the David Spade films. He saw a part for an extra in that movie. He contacted the fucking guy, and he goes, wouldn't it be funny if Joey Diaz walked in there with a midget and five black guys? He sold it. Guys, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, dude. He sold it, but yeah. he was gay, and he used to go to Palm Springs. Yeah. And in my world, there's no vacations. No, no. You know no, what I'm saying? No, like, he yeah. would leave on Friday, and i come back till Tuesday. Dude, down there all weekend, do deep yeah, knee bends you know, over a fire yeah, hydrant. Deep knee bends and eating fucking ramen and whatever the fuck <laughs> they eat, right? And he's down there jumping up and down, and I called him. I fucking, I fucking call him one day on, like, a Tuesday, and I go. Down there jumping up and down. This is one. This eating is, ramen. I don't you know think I'm fucking do. kidding you guys. This is when the longest yard breakdown came out. And, and one of the agents I had called me, he goes, hey, man. The longest yard came, I go, call him back. And he called him back, and he, he was the first person that goes, he goes, ah, I don't think so. They're not going to see you because they were looking for a star. They either want Tony Saragusa or Big Pussy from The Sopranos. And I was like, that's not good enough. And I asked the gay agent, Greg Mayo. Yeah. Uh, Greg Mayo called on there. And then I had somebody else. I had somebody, I had Greg at Acme. He was just a pothead. I just sold him weed, and he made certain calls for me. He was one of those dudes that all he did was set up casting director workshops in different oh, states. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, fuck the shit out of 18-year-olds. Yeah. When I'd see him on Tuesday, he'd have fucking cameras. This is before the phone and the camera. This guy actually went in with cameras, took pictures of him, and took him back to his hotel and said, get naked, suck my dick, I'll get you a job. With Who was the Pitt. fucking guy from Colonel Hogan? What was the dude name from Hogan's Heroes? Bob Crane? Bob he had a fucking Bob Crane starter kit. He had kit. the Bob Crane starter kit. This guy was getting his dick sucked all over the country on casting director workshops. So oh, you yeah. fucking people see those casting director <laughs> workshops, mind your business, don't go to them. No. They pay like 200 bucks and they yeah, have you read yeah. and they tell you you have a career in this shit yeah. and meanwhile you got nothing. You got Ugat. you like Pinocchio and the Geico commercial. <laughs> the guy says to you, you have a future and his nose grows. <laughs> yeah, there's fucking, so guys that's like a pedophile or a fucking one of those honey boo boo can fucking Greg was worthless. Shows. Greg was worthless unless I got him a Coke Rock or like eight ounces of weed, which I pinched an ounce and put water in the bag. Oh, I used to work this guy. I used to sell him the wettest weed in town. He always tell me, how come this weed's drenched? Because I got to make a living. Cause like I would spray it with a spray bottle to make it wet. Oh. Then he'd put it in the trunk of the car and it would dry and he'd lose an ounce automatically. Who do you think you're dealing with? That's an old fucking street thing. So, uh, okay, come on, Lee. You want to run with Jews, Lee, or you want to run with I'm these I'm pretty impressed. That's a pretty good no, Lee, that's, Jesus. No, that's Christ. nothing. That's back in the day. That's back you, in the day. Back in the day, you would buy an eighth for fucking 200. You go upstairs, <laughs> do one, throw three and a half grams of cut on it, run it out, get your original eighth back. Oh, forget that. about it. And oh now you got two for the head. I beat America. I bought, What's I better sold, than America? I sold the eight ball who I met. I met one time from the, <laughs> from the fucking... From the, Welcome, Padre. It's three and a half. I took like two grams out and threw like aspirin in it. And he kept calling me and I wouldn't have take his call. He forgot all about it. He never said nothing to me. Paul Rodriguez gave me 251. I caught him at the. I caught Paul at El Compadre. This is after I got right to meet Paul. Right, and right, I knew, right from the fucking house. Right, he had the little fucking gardener right, right there, there. Right there. I know where you're at. I knew Paul was a fucking dirty coke fiend. And one night, I bumped into El Compadre after Latino. And he goes, Can you get some up here? I go, Absolutely. I go, What do you want? He goes, an eight ball. I go, give me 300. I bought the eight ball and left. <laughs> and I never gave it to him. That motherfucker never said a word to me. Why did he bargain for it? Like, why did you no, have to he, like, he figure out how much money you wanted? I didn't give a fuck. Yeah, he didn't remember, bro. He don't remember. I told him, give me 300 for the eight ball. He probably bought three eight balls on his own while he was there and forgot about it. Oh, yeah. Fucking craziness, Lee. Fucking craziness. But what mm. we call the three agents. So what happened was, the longest shot came out. I go, Greg had juice. I go, Greg, call John. The guy on Venice Boulevard, cool casting cat, John something. I go, call him up and get me in there. And he calls me right back. And he goes, Kyle, Kyle, 
I don't know if I could get you in there. That's a strong office. That night, Jim Kellum comes to see me at the ice house. He goes, you have an agent? I got like three of them, but I could use a fourth. <laughs> I don't know Jim Kellum. I go, can you get yeah, me? Yeah, the office room? up there right above Subway over there. By the wig little... shop. Yeah. I go, can you get me, uh, can you get me into, the, into the longest yard? He goes, what? John Papsidera, who's a cool motherfucker. I, he cast me in three or four things. Let me tell you how much juice he's got. I went to Vegas one day. I was in nines, and that motherfucker was sitting there with Tony Bennett, just him and Tony Bennett. That's, then I went to the fucking a motorcycle convention in Milwaukee. Who's at my hotel? John fucking whatever his name. That's how bad that casting guy is. He's also casting that show now on Showtime. What's the show with all the stars in it? With fucking the dude, and he plays the Hollywood fixer with oh, Stephen Bauer. Ray Donovan. Ray, Ray Donovan. Donovan. He cast Have that you Ray. seen that show? Have you seen it? A couple times. Yeah, it's, it's just, okay. It's, it's all right. It, don't do it ain't on Toronto. Yeah, it ain't on. It ain't the Sopranos. Yeah. So, uh, it's half, good, don't, don't don't hold your hats when you negotiate with these desert people. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I talked to Callum, and Callum's like, "I get you the movie part, whatever." Well, sure enough, they call. You know, who they called to offer my movie to. Who? Out of all the agents I had calling there, and all the people, guess who they call to offer the movie to? Stacy Pocoluto. That's how stupid Warner Brothers was. She's a publicist. And somehow or another, they got Stacy's name, and they're like, Stacy, I would like to offer Joey Diaz a role in The Longest Show. And Stacy's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Stacy called me, and she goes, they're looking for you. They want to cash you. So I called Jim Kellum, and I called the gay guy to see who would hit the mark first. Kellum got it first. He got the commission. I went. I went up there. I fired the gay guy. Fired him that afternoon. I got to go. I got a big agent. I left him. Two weeks later, he's looking at Variety, and I get cast in The Longest Yard. He's fuming. He's calling everybody. Really? Yeah, and he called me, and I told him the truth. I said, Doug, I had to let you go because you, you told me they were looking for a star. So you're done. I am a fucking star. How are you going to tell me they're looking for a star? I put the fucking thing down. I sent the tape myself. Now everybody wants a piece of the action. Nobody's getting nothing. Yeah, In I my world, it's first man who dials. It's first man who dials. We and him were going to do something. I called this production lady. On a Monday at 10 o'clock, she didn't answer the phone. I ain't doing business with you. I call you on a Monday at 10 o'clock. You don't answer the phone. I ain't doing business with you. How the fuck are you not going to answer the phone on like Monday at 10? And then she called me back like at 3.30. Ah! What'd you want? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Really? I don't deal with people. <laughs> Monday, you got to answer the phone. 8, eight o'clock. If you got to be there at 9, I call you at 8.30 just to see what type of heart you got. If you answer the phone, hello? Bro, you there? Yeah, listen, I need this and this and this. Let's get this going. Yeah, that's the best time to call, actually. Yeah, I don't fuck around. I ain't got nothing going on. They just got there. Yeah. Give them something to do. Yeah, come on now. Why would you want to do business with somebody who doesn't answer a fucking phone Monday at 8 o'clock in the morning? I want your attention Monday at 8 o'clock. <laughs> you, you do call me 8 o'clock almost every morning. 8 o'clock. There you go. I got no time to fuck around. We're in the I hunt. You're 26 years old. You don't drink. You don't do blow. And you know what they Why call? would you be up at two? Because you were playing games? I ain't got time for that shit. You, know you stay up till three fucking around. I'm going to call you at eight. That's five hours. When yeah. I was 26, I slept one hour with an eye open. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? That's called a Hollywood wake-up call. Larry. That's called a Hollywood wake-up That's true. If you're a young... Today I was watching uh, Boiler Room was on. And it was the beginning when uh, uh, the guy from Boston is giving the speech in the office. And he said something that's true. He goes, give me... He walks in and he tried to pull up what's his name. Alex Baldwin got the best speech ever to Frank, a sales Glenn room. Gary, Glenn, Glenn Gary, Glenn yeah. But the second one is this kid. This kid walks in and he goes, hi, get the fuck up. You're sitting in my chair. Get up, get out. That's how he opens up the meeting. And then the other kid, who's got a Series 7 license? I do. Get the fuck out. I don't, we don't hire brokers. We train them here. And he goes, listen, I'm going to keep this nice and simple. You're going to be a millionaire in three years. Okay? Now, in the process, I don't give a fuck about your mother. I don't give a fuck about your family. I really don't. I'm telling you, you're going to be a millionaire in three fucking years. You're 21. You could fuck around at 21, or you could fucking get the fuck out. You want to take vacations? Go teach school. <laughs> you want to take vacations? Go teach school. We don't take vacations here. Don't ask. We work 24-7, Sundays and Saturdays double. So if you're not going to do that, get the fuck out. But you're going to be a millionaire in three years. Because, in, or if not, you'll be a million in five years. Because with that work ethic at 20, yeah, they can't stop you. And that's what most kids today do not have. It's a joke. It's Twitter. It's Facebook. It's fucking uh, the fucking games with the whatever. Guys are There's out there too many distractions. Yeah, people are trying to write the Great American Tweet. 
Yeah, and there's too many fucking distractions. Yeah. People trying to shoot a fuck, you know. And it's true. At 21, you should want to fucking make ten million dollars. Yeah, I don't go, understand. Go after. It. When I was 21, I was either gonna steal it or make it. I didn't know how I was gonna do it. But in the meantime, I ain't gonna miss a meal. Yeah. If it's between me missing a meal or that wallet falling out of your pocket, guess what? I got a magnet in my hand. You got a <laughs> magnet in your fucking pocket. You know, I didn't know what, you know, I don't understand the mentality. But people will come to you, and that's what we've discussed this a million times. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. You know, how many comics you talk to, they'll call you up and say, Jay, well, Jimmy, it's just not happening for me, man. Well, do me a favor. Go down to the improv this week. I can't. I'm going to play golf. Yeah. I can't talk to you. You know what's funny, man? I, I can't play, talk. I, I, yeah, I play golf, I but I play golf play. when I'm fucking doing Sarasota. I'm out. I'm, I'm not on the road. I'm not going to miss an audition. I'm out there. Yeah, I play. I go and play a little round of golf. You know, I'm a, those, not even golf. They tell you they're going to their father, their sister's wedding. Like, yeah. I don't give a fuck about your fucking sister. You put two hundred envelopes. Today I got an invite to my niece's wedding. I love her. She's one of my favorite nieces. But guess what? She's going to do in the envelope. Yeah. I'm in Minneapolis. I yeah. cancel Minneapolis October sixteenth. Go to a fucking wedding. First of all, that's college football season. So that dude's a pussy. You married the wrong fucking dude. Nobody gets married on college Saturday. That's a big fucking mistake. You got you don't. You don't. We've had this fucking discussion. You got to look at the calendar and say, and look at everybody's calendar. Yeah, so everybody's calendar. I mean, who what? does get married? April, May, June. May, right. June, July. It's boring. There's no football. There's no conflicts. You miss a baseball game. There's another one tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? But college, come on. You're not going to fucking, and I don't even like college football. I'm telling you, I wouldn't fucking go just on a principle. That's how I fucking roll, cocksuckers. What's Tony Bennett at? You're slipping tonight. You're over there sitting half moked up. It's a beautiful day to be alive, cocksuckers. Month, <laughs> March 9th. Moped the church up. bit. you over there moped I'm up. I'm not moped up. I want to be around. You going to put the video on the new TV? Pick up the There's no video. It's just a, when like a, somebody whatever it's called. A slideshow. It was better than this. Some, I'm some getting hit right now with those mushrooms. Like That's what's <laughs> better than this. <laughs> those mushrooms are creeping while I'm sleeping. Me too. And Oh, shit. The THC star. Thank God I got a cookie for us to leave for later. Oh, no. But <laughs> Put the music on. Who told you the fucking what? What are you, DJ? Turn it off. Put the fucking music on. DJ Turner. No, but sometimes, like, if I got drunk and then I tried to get high, it wouldn't happen. And last time we did the mushrooms, we did the mushrooms first. And I couldn't feel the, the star. But we did the star first today. And now the mushrooms are, they're both kicking Bro, in. I'm a street pharmacist, do I? I know how to mix and match and keep you alive. I got to piss. We got to, we got to. There's gotta, no pissing during the show. No, right? no come on. I got to fucking. My back needs to fuck. There's no pissing during the fucking show, cocksucker. Or this one. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm loving it today. Oh. What's the story? Can I turn the music off? No, you can't turn the fucking music on? What's going on? You got sciatica? No, my dad does. Oh, I did. He's doing good. You know I don't fuck around. That's why I got this head. <laughs> so what else, Lee? I did a podcast last night, like one in the morning. I was just, I, I was super bored because of the time change. Got right. What happened to you? Off. Um, so I just, I, I had a, a melted green hornet in my drawer that you always get mad at me for not eating. So I pulled it out and I started talking to people on Twitter and we did like a 45 minute podcast. Good for you, brother. See, you had a good time. Nobody got their feelings hurt. You looking no. good. What are you losing down? You're down to 90? No, I'm still 85. You're still 85. But I, like, I'm finally getting to the point where there's... Like, I'm back to the lowest. What are you thing. eating? What are you eating over the weekend that you're not losing the weight with mama? It's, it wasn't that. It what was, was it? my trip to Florida. Then there was Valentine's Day. It seemed like there was, like, from since November, it's been um, just, like, there's one excuse after another to cheat. And it it's so, and, then like, I'm not, it's my fault. But since then, I've been kind of just, I, I haven't gained, which is cool. But other than that, I've been kind of staying the How's same. How's mama's diet? She's doing great. She's almost at 80 pounds. Really? Yeah. She's beating you and shit. No, I'm beating her still barely, but I had more to lose than she's she did. She's going to fuck you up pretty soon. She's going <laughs> to just pass right by, you see. 
she goes, you could give her, that's how you fuck her up, you gotta give her a star and watch her eat ice cream, then you could beat her, that's how you have to do it, you have to be on top of the fucking thing, you got American ingenuity, you know what I'm saying? She's applying to be like a, a district attorney, I don't think she wants to have she, don't never know. By these the time, listen, by the time she death. takes the piss test, that's like two years from now, right <laughs> That she could do heroin every night this year and still come back clean. All right, so don't worry about it. Close that door, Jimmy Douches, before the cops bust in here and think that we got mushrooms and shit. It's, uh... It's fucked up that Kennison's been gone so long. I read the I reread the book the other day. Jimmy Did you sure. really? I mean, it's been 23 years, bro. 23 that, years that, or 21? 20, no. Uh, 93? 92. 92. 92, dude. That's, I think about that all the time. I think about... Uh, God, that seems like a lifetime ago, but boy, was that fun. <laughs> you know? And you know, the funny thing is, is I, I you think back on his legacy, you know, and you go, you know, like Bill Hicks is a guy who has become more famous posthumously than, than Sam. Sam's kind of, he was, you know, dropped down a little bit. I don't think he left the, you know, I mean, he's a great comedian, an amazing comedian, but just didn't, I don't think left him the big enough body of work, you know? It's just 23 years, I'm just 23 years ago. This... This April, it will be 23 years. March 10th. It's amazing that... Uh, 7 o'clock. Yeah, I still remember... You know? Going home and not being surprised. Like, going, you know? Like, not going, wow. Like, Well, you know, the thing is, I'm just glad... Because having toured with him and, and hung out with him and, and it was a friend of his, I, I was glad that he didn't know D in a hotel room, like fucking blue shoe, with like fucking two hookers and stuff like that. I mean, at least, at least the guy, you know, was protecting his wife and some guy was in a head-on collision. The other guy was at fault. He was protecting his wife. He lost his life, but his wife lived. Uh, they lost the child. She was pregnant at the time. So you think about that, you go, man, that's just, and just kind of rolls out of the car and LeBeau was there and just, you know, he goes, I don't want to go. He goes, don't worry, you're not going to die. And he realized he's not talking to him. He's looking past him. I mean, just Carl's there holding it. He's, Cars are driving over these beer cans. We're in the back of the pickup truck. They're now on the road, and they're spraying all over the back of his head. And he goes, I have those fucking memories. It's just like that, the, the beer just sprayed on my head. And, and he just realized, he goes, he just he just expired in his arms, you know. And it was like, you know, those guys had a, you know, a, a, a friendship that start, was start. They were both there. They started the same night, and then they kind of ended, you know. I mean, Carl LeBeau, who I fucking love to death, but the guys, you know, Got the shitty end of the stick in that deal, you know. There's a, but but still one of the funniest dudes working, one of the most physical comics out there I've ever known. You know, it's just it just it was a crazy time. You know, I, I think I was just young enough at the time to survive it all. I mean, there's there's dude there is. I mean, I knock wood every day. Going, man, I there's a freaking hundred nights you could have OD'd or whatever. You're hanging with these guys. I mean, you're touring with this dude who's one of the most controversial comedians in America at the time doing. You know, fucking 3,500 people. I'm doing the Spectrum in Philadelphia where I used to go out, you know, the, the Flyers and the Sixers playing. You're doing 6,300 people and your entire family's in the audience. And that day there was a fucking story in the newspaper. There was an interview with you. And you got, you had these fucking great, cool moments, you know. So, yeah. He, and I want, and not to mention, the guy was a fucking brilliant comedian. I mean, people, if you go back and you watch his stuff, it still stands up. It's still impressive shit. I mean, you know, it's, and that whole, you know, Hicks and him had kind of started together, so it was like, I think maybe he took a beyond. But even if you listen to Hicks' stuff, I mean, Letterman did, where he ran a Hicks set on the anniversary of his mom on, which I thought was really cool. He goes, I don't know why we beat this guy. He goes, I thought it was great. There was nothing in there that we could, and he apologized to his mom. That it was, but, you know, the, that, that was, the, you know, there's, you know, if you read, I just finished reading a great book called Comedy from the Edge by Richard Zoglin. Have you read that book? Uh -huh. about? But he just talks about how stand-up comedy in the 1970s changed America. And he literally takes it from, you know, Car Lenny to Carlin and Pryor, who became counterculture icons, who influenced this whole generation, who influenced that whole generation, and influenced that generation, and, and just how... I mean, because you think about it, it wasn't even a fucking real occupation at the time. I mean, there was guys doing vaudeville, and then there was guys doing nightclubs, and then... Fucking 1980s, you had the explosion of all these comedy clubs. You could actually fucking make a living doing stand-up comedy. Before, I don't think you could. But it, it's it's a, it's a great read. But, uh, yeah, you think I think about those guys. Like, you know, fucking dude, Richard Jenny was one of those guys who would watch. Who I thought just fucking pound for pound. Just one of the funniest dudes. I mean, as far as structurally joke structure and just fucking boom. I mean, you know, you kind of miss that a little bit. 
You know, I mean, guys who do it well. I mean, dude, I, I don't know. Maybe I told you this before, but it was like, I was, talking, I was doing a, a festival in Ireland. My fucking mom and dad came over to Ireland. My brothers, my old man got to see me perform in Ireland. And, you know, crossed that off the fucking bucket list. And coming back, I'm sitting with fucking Dom. And he goes, I'm so glad your family came over. He goes, I don't, he goes, I don't know. He goes, I would never be doing a show in Italy. I invite my family. So I was hoping that you would bring your family. And everybody came out. They had dinner that night. And Dom, on the way back, we're, we're, we're waiting for the plane. And he says, I wonder if you're, uh, he goes, I wonder if your family realized how tough it was for you to do. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, Jimmy, you're fucking playing the A comedy clubs. You're playing all the clubs that you see everybody in. He goes, yeah, man. He goes, how many fucking guys do you know to do that? And I said, no, he goes, I'm serious. How many guys do you know that are alive, that are doing it, they are doing it at a high level? And I said, shit, I could probably come up with 80, 90 names. He goes, yeah, together we probably have crossed over. But I bet you we come up with 125, 130 names. I go, yeah. He goes, you know, how many professional baseball players do you know? I said, you know, 20, 25 man rosters, 32 teams. It's like 750 guys. Yeah, give or take. You know, NHL's a little less, NBA's a little less because it's still a pretty fucking elite group because it's a really, you're making your living as a professional stand up comedian. I had never thought about it in those fucking terms before. I had never, never even in my mind. And I went, wow. Yeah, if you think about it, you're making your living doing stand up comedy. That's, I mean, and if you're doing it at a fucking high level and you're doing all those clubs, that's fucking, dude. It's an elite group. I, I didn't I didn't put that much thought into it, but it really kind of woke me up a little bit. It was a I thought it was a great observation. I feel right now, at times, I'm living in a dream. I am working at places that 10 years ago I never dreamed of even contacting. Yeah. I never dreamed of even walking into. I'm talking to people that I never thought I heard about them, and I never thought I would have, have the opportunity to meet those people. Yeah. Every time I wake up, I'm so fucking thankful. Well, you put the work in, Joe. You put the work in. I mean, it's like it's like just perseverance. I mean, you've hung in there, and, and opportunities have presented themselves. And I think you've taken really, uh, uh, taken those opportunities and taken them to the freaking end. But degree. never thought of it like this. I never thought I'd be capable to put to, that people would come see me. I never thought of it in that term. I always thought of it as, yeah, I'll do comedy. No, but dude, you're a fucking genuine artist. What's going on with you over there? Everything all right, cop sucker? You're breathing? I'm fine. Yeah. No. Like I'm you're fine. dying over there. Get it together, you. I am? Oh, it's no, just I'm good. Throwing it over the fucking lead to break them it's, up. Uh, no, but it's, it was, it, it's cool. Like the past few weeks, you've gone to a few places where you were excited, but before you're like, I don't know how I'm going to do here. And then I call you Thursday night and you have like 200 seats sold. It's yeah, pretty it's, crazy. It's, it's, and the people that are coming out, the people that are coming out. I'm talking to them after shows, and I'm taking pictures, and I'm feeling them, and I'm feeling what they're saying. I can't fucking believe it. Let me tell you something. I live in a dream. Like, I live in a dream. Every day I go, this is going to pop. It's Yeah, I know exactly, because I'm going through it right now, just because the last comic standing, you're doing a thing now, and the last couple times I've hit, probably like the last six weeks on Saturday night, sold out shows, hit bonuses, fucking people come up and just hanging out, taking pictures and meeting your people. But you know what the thing is? Guys like Larry the Cable Guy, I don't even care what you think about it, but I know the dude's work. Like, I knew him before, Larry the Cable Guy, and Dan Whitney is one of those guys, stand there and shake every hand, talk to people. That's how you build your fan base. I mean, I never understand a guy who doesn't come out and meet these fucking people. The kid just paid fucking 24 bucks to come see him. Go out and hang out, shake their hand, have a fucking drink with them. I mean, you know what I mean? It's weird, but I tell you, it's it's been happening. I'm going through the same thing now, but it's awesome. I mean, you go, you, you know, you know how hard and how long you work to get there. You did not take that for granted. Oh, it's very special. Yeah. It's something that uh, I'm grateful when I see people who aren't grateful and act like jerk offs and I hear stories about them on stage. I get fucking pissed. It yeah. makes me because we're so fortunate. We fly every week. I know people who don't fucking fly at all. Who, if you tell them you're gonna get on a plane, they think like it's fucking great. I take <laughs> flying for granted. I know the airports. I know the food at different airports. Yeah. I get excited. If I'm flying out of Newark, I always try to get those crab cakes out of United, the best in the country. Five places that are the top five. Oh yeah. You get two crab cakes with two fucking eggs, sunny side up, and two pieces of wheat toast. <sighs> Before you get on that 5 a.m. flight, push you right into nappy Nunuville. By the time you get to fucking L.A., it's 9 o'clock. Dude, I was just in Asia. Check this out. Oh, my God. You think God. that's fucking crap? Dude, I'm just in Asia. I was in five. I flew to Hong Kong. Had a night. Now, you did the same rooms Ari did. Yeah, the same. I, okay. I'm the one who got Ari in there. Okay, Ari right, said, right, hey, right. I want okay. to go over there and check it out. I miss Bill Burr. By two day, Bill Burr is over in uh, freaking Singapore and Hong Kong. I'm in Shanghai. I'm just crossing over him. He went to Mumbai. 
after that. He did like a tour right through there. But I mean, you go out there and there's these expats, these Americans, Australians, English, English speaking audiences that just love American stand up comedy. And they bring you over, you get to stay in, the, I'm telling you, the, the, the best hotels I've ever been in. The hospitality is first class. They take care of you. Make, you got enough to eat. Yeah, you want to go out. And you got everybody taken care of you. don't have to speak the language. Although it's nice to know a few long, few lines. Like, Nietzsche, no, fang, ma. How much for a hand job? Uh, no, that's just, <laughs> just enough to get yourself around a massage joint. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it's, uh, but it's cool, man. The food is fucking amazing. It's just experiment going. I get to go. People save up their whole lives for a trip just to go to Beijing, where the air quality is so ridiculously bad. But you know, I've been there. Went to the Forbidden City. Don't ever go there. And I know why it's forbidden. They didn't have a Starbucks in there. But I'm just saying, why would you go, dude? You don't realize how many Asian people are. Dude, it's 1.7. It's a 1.7 billion. I mean, the 0.7. Is more than we have in our entire country. It's like freaking, it's like uh, for every Chinese guy, there's nine Chinese guys. You know what I'm saying? It's it's ridiculous, but it but it's cool. I mean, I get to have that trip, and I've done it a couple times now. But yeah, you go shit, man. This is what's better than this, you know? I mean, going to Israel. I went to Israel, dude. We did some shows for the Kobe Mandel Foundation. I mean, yeah, I got to travel every week anyway. But I mean, those trips are just for me. I want to go see some shit, you know. Yeah, and it's uh, it, it's hard to describe me in 1994 in a one bedroom Rocky apartment. That's what my friends used to call my apartment. <laughs> the Rocky apartment. I lived in North Boulder. I right. paid 400 a month. There was a little kitchen when you walked in that I never lit the fucking stove one time in three years, not once. The refrigerator never had a stitch of food in it. Just fat tire beer <clears throat> and water for the next morning recovery, and a little Gatorade from time to time. The gas station was down the corner. I had no phone. No phone ever in that place. You want to call me, you got to call the gas station. All right. <laughs> this is no shit. I That's what you can live off the grid. How, but... how would you find out you got a call? I didn't care. I didn't care. <laughs> they, they would take messages at the gas station, and I would <laughs> pay you back from the pay phone with a calling card. This is how fucked up my life was. Wow. If I wanted to call you, if you lived around the corner, I had to walk to the gas station to call you. It was fucking, people would pick me up at the gas station. I would tell people, pick me up at the gas. I lived across from North Boulder Recreation Center. Yeah, bro, that shit builds character, by the way. You walked in, I had a little tub shower, a stand-up shower with a sliding door, a toilet, and there was a wall that had a little hole in it, and I used to throw my empty bindles in there. One night, I could have sworn I left coke in the bindle. I ripped the wall down, and there was a million fucking bindles behind there. And not one of them with coke. All of them had mold in them from me licking them ah, and closing them. Everyone had green in them. Wow. I had to put the wall back up. The landlord kept coming down to sit, and I'd go, you can't go in the bathroom. Why not? Because I, I wouldn't let him in because I ripped the wall down. No, it was fucking, my bedroom was beautiful. I had a beautiful window, beautiful bedroom, but it was connected. The bed, the bed I had took everything up. So basically, the door didn't open or shut. You just fell in. I didn't have I've a, had that room before. I didn't have a bureau before. <laughs> this was the apartment, and it was clean, no mice, beautiful. It was just a rocky apartment. I had a bench yeah. for a dining room table. That's all you needed. That I had a, a Sony Trinitron from the old days, and I was getting them shipped out. No. I kept one. And I had a fucking couch from medieval times that somebody left on the porch, and I doped it up, Puerto Rican it up, steam cleaned it upstairs, and... It was brand new for the sitting. And you would sit there and you sleep on your cycle, you know, if I could just walk one shot. And they realized they, that I wasn't a ham and egg, and the guy from the neighborhood made it good, you know? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I used to go there and get poked up. They had a little window in the middle of the living room. I used to hide from that little window. So I turned the light in the bathroom off and just hide in the fucking mattress. It was just horrid. But I loved the place. It was clean. Yeah. But I used to go back there at nights after I'd do comedy. And I would read just for laughs. Remember the newspaper that John Fox used to put oh, out yeah. out of San Francisco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the back, there was a comedy club guide. And I would circle the clubs. I was going to perform at Igby's and the comedy store. Yeah. And, and just the Houston laugh stop, because that was all there in 91, 93, Yeah, I was just in your old stomping grounds. I was up there in Tacoma, bro. I was up there doing that uh, the, the Tacoma Comedy Club. So what's in Tacoma? It's a great club. It's a family-run operation. 
But I'm telling you. It used to be the underground and they bought it? No, 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 no. no. This is a brand new room. This is a great room. This is a blue collar audience that comes in there. They're a freaking amount. I was just in Tacoma, dude. I'm telling you, the Tacoma Comedy Club, for my money. I mean, they got the, you know, they got those high end places up in Bellevue and, you know, in Seattle. The the, The room, the Velvet room. The the, the parlor. That's what it's called. It's nice. I've done those rooms, but I'm telling you, man, I tap into that audience in Tacoma. Working class, blue collar people want to come there. They They want to laugh. And you come out, you come out of that swing, and bing, bing, punchline, dick joke. They're on board. Everybody's going to. I mean, it was great. So you're working every week now, yeah? Oh uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, you know, I try to hang out. I try to, you know, audition when I'm in town. But you know, I'm at, I'm still running running that high from last comic. I have not stopped fucking working since I came out that show, which is the great thing, believe me, and it's great. No, and it's I'm great and I'm working on a new hour for Netflix. I'm developing that and putting that together. We're taping that like the third week in August, putting all that stuff together. I'm coming out with a brand new brand new fucking hour, and, uh, and that's what I've been working on. Jimmy Schubert, where's the crazy ex girlfriend, the white one that lived in Florida? That was uh, a bro. signed with three yards before she left. Where is she? Uh, she's uh, she's in St. Augustine with her parents. You know, her parents are getting old. Her dad just went through some stuff. So she kind of moved back to be with her parents. And, you know, I, I guess I, I guess she's happy. I don't, I don't really kind of, you know, get involved. I mean, there's a reason they're an ex-girlfriend. You know what I'm saying, bro? You guess when was the last time you spoke to her? I mean, you call her once a year. You talk to her maybe uh, once a year. You know, maybe a couple of years ago. It's just I've kind of moved on, you know. I moved on. It's like, you know, and I really did. I mean, I, 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 listen, I, I'm, I'm surprised with, you even talked to her three years ago. Like, yeah. I'm just asking maybe to, you saw her on a picture yeah, on Facebook. Yeah, man, I went out when I grew up for seven years, man. She you know. was fucking nuts. Yeah. We all, we've all had a girlfriend that oh, dude. was just nuts. And I remember seeing her like at 8 o'clock at night in Miami and then bumping into her at 5. Yeah. And going like, what the fuck? You were going home at 8.30. You did a spot. Yeah. Women are the only people that they could tell you something. And then 10 minutes later, there's something. You could call a woman and go, what's up? What are you doing? Tonight? I'm staying in. I'll see you when you get here. When you get there, there's a note. Yeah. Susie came over. She fell down the stairs. She needed somebody to have a drink with. What are you talking about? <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about, Susie? Fell. I don't give a fuck if she yeah, fell on the stairs. Yeah, dude, give that, her an aspirin and send yeah, her home. And I, I, let me tell you something. I love that girl, but she was a fucking handful. She was like Kim Bassinger from Blind Nate. Whatever you do, don't give her any liquor, bro. Don't oh, do any God. shots with her because I'm telling you. And look, I mean, dude, I probably stayed in that relationship a couple years longer than I should have. But, uh, I mean, you know, she was, uh, uh, you know, that's where you, that's where you learn those lessons. You go... Be careful the people you let into your life because oh it God. says a lot about who the fuck had, you are at the dog, time. I had the stripper for four years, yeah. which was <laughs> a fucking nightmare. Yeah. And she still calls me. She called me the other day to talk, talk to me about something, investing opportunities or jujitsu. She's still <laughs> opening up a jujitsu school. She went, and it's always every boyfriend of hers ends up in jail. <laughs> I have not, even this white guy now. Her fiance ended up in jail. What happened? He was on probation and he bought. What's, pain the, pills. what's the common denominator now? What's the common denominator? She's fucking crazy. She's yeah, the, the common denominator is her. Yeah. yeah, she's so poisoned that even as a boyfriend, you pay for her sins. Even as a boyfriend, wow. you pay for her sins. And I had a lot of fun with her, a lot of laughs, you know. Yeah. But it was it was it was taxing on your soul. And people always ask me, man, there was a point I knew you, Joey, out in L.A. You were having a hard time. You really weren't that funny. I don't know how you were getting by. Then one day you just got funny. The day I stopped dating that girl. Wow. My life changed forever. It was four years of, mm. you know, 60% of your time is thinking about this person. Like, what is going on? There's okay. no, you know what it is? You, 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 get, you can't even think about or create possibilities in your own no, life. No, it was, all, it's it was like too much. It's a, you know, it's, it's and right the pussy and all the sex was great. She no. let me fucking torture and tie her up and stab her. <laughs> I mean, she let me fuck her in the ass. But at the end of the day, it wasn't worth it. I'd rather just get a blowjob and fuck you once a month and have no drama. Uh, she was a filthy <laughs> fucking animal. She was. Yeah, the, she was the ex-boyfriend mask while you fucked her. Oh I mean, it was my drama, god! I had bro. to beat the boyfriend up. The ex, he came out. I got arrested. It was four years. I ended up fighting with her on on in front of Gavin's house. She was gonna hit me with a steak, and I was no, I was gonna hit her with a fucking meatloaf, and she was gonna hit me with mace. And I threw train change at her, and I, walked, <laughs> I remember walking away from her, going, "This is." Is this even fucking, dude, why am dude, I doing this? Dude, I got news for you. I will fucking never do that. Never. Now, no, once no. you do it one time, you'll go, yeah, wow. No, no. It's easy Sorry. to say, oh, my God, but I never, never did I deal with any time. 
you know, I was never a sex addict. I like my dick suck. I like snorting coke. That's when I get those dirty thoughts. Besides that, I don't get dirty thoughts. I don't need to get pussy every night. When I was first doing comedy, I had that rocky apartment. I lived in that rocky apartment for four years. I think two girls walked in the door. Because I always had something, after like 27, I had this saying that a buddy of mine told me, before you bring him home, ask yourself if you want to wake up to this fucking animal. Once the booze is done, and it's like that old saying, look at a guy and put a police suit on him. If it fits, don't fuck with him. He's a cop. Yeah. I used to, for years, when I was 27, I learned a very valuable lesson. If you look at a woman, you could tell this bitch going to be a pain in the ass in the morning. Can you want to wake up to this bitch? I don't care how good the blowjob is. I don't care if she's going to stick a tongue up my ass. First of all, I only got a gram. And I'm not going to take a chance with this animal. If I bring her home and she don't suck my dick, I'm going to kill her. Because I only got a gram. I got three quarters of a fucking gram. She better suck my dick. So... <laughs> If I'm thinking this, I just say forget it. Yeah, I don't know. Right. It's better to fucking, run, yeah. fucking go rub one out, do a tissue of love, roll over, call yeah. it night. No, 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 you no, You wake no, no, up, no, no, tomorrow is no. a brand new oh fucking my God. day. There was a point in my life where I didn't even want women around. I didn't want nobody around. But the only way you would come over if I knew you were a short thing. Like, I don't want to talk about it. As a matter of fact, as soon as you walk in, just drop your dress. Because I don't want to talk about this later. Let's snort some coke. Let me suck your titties just to get out of the way. <laughs> Let me suck your pussy just to go. And women will look at me and go, are you crazy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do a couple lines. Listen, there's no reason to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's, no re there's no reason to do no lines. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, give yeah. you one line. Let me eat your ass. And let's get it out of the way so the rest of the night we can just rest and yeah, be friends. Yeah, we just relax. And be but friends. if you have this sexual tension all night back and forth, uh, and then I, I got to wait for you to let the tit fall out by mistake. <laughs> I don't have that. You know what? Or every broad does that. The shirt rolls off the shoulder. The titty pops out. And then they start, and then you say, pop it out. I don't have time for that either. Let's, right off the bat, take off your pants. What are you talking about? Take off, suck my dick. Let me eat your pussy. If not, I don't know you're real. I don't know you're fucking real. It's like when you sell coke to somebody, they just leave like Miami Vice. They buy a kilo and just leave. You know what? Before you take this kilo, let me see you do fucking four fucking horse blasts. Not like Neil Simon in that movie. What's no, his no. name? I'm not talking like, the kind where you need a fucking garden yeah, hose. That's to get the fucking, only way I'm doing this. A couple fucking rails. And you good. people think I'm fucking nuts. No, I'm not nuts. When I only got $60 and a half a gram of blow, I ain't taking a chance. It's like people who go, well, I heard that this place is a great restaurant. No, 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 no. Hoy's Walk is known and proven. We ain't taking a chance with your shit little Hindu restaurant because yeah, you know they got no. We're gonna go to fucking Hoy's Walk where it's four ninety five. I get a soup, I get an egg roll, I get a fucking cheap fucking fried snack, I get an entree, I get white bread, and if you're lucky, the lady gives you a little fucking fortune cookie for four ninety fucking five. Beat I'm gonna take deal. a chance and go to this place because you like it or your friend. Fuck you and your fucking friend. We're going to this fucking <laughs> lunch spot. And that's how it works out. That's it. Yeah. You know, I don't want to walk past a restaurant. If there's a lot of people yeah. in there, I go, hey, it must be good. No, because how many, that's the law. Listen, we are fucking saps as humanity. How do you know if a team's going to lose? Ask 10 people. Go up to 10 people. We've discussed this before, Jimmy Shue. Yeah. You know, it's hysterical. When I used to work for a sports betting service, which I watched that movie for a little while yesterday, Two for the Money, with Al Pacino. And, yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, Matthew McConaughey. Now, the company I worked for, I worked for Colorado Sports Advisors, but their main parent company was Sports Advisors something, and it was Mike Duffy and and this other fucking uh, Jewish guy who thought he was in the mafia. He threatened me one time. I told him to suck my dick. Stu <laughs> Finer. So one of those guys left and stole the idea and made a script and sold it, and these guys tried to sell it, and they couldn't sell it. That's the only thing the problem with that movie was. They couldn't sell it. They got too many good-looking guys. Good-looking guys don't do that business. It's people who look evil. But when I worked for those, what's the point of fucking the story? I don't, even I don't know, but all I remember <laughs> is I made a fucking big bowl of this fucking chili. You came over, we watched Monday Night Football, Monday Night we watched Football. the Broncos, and I'm laying, you watched it, you're calling the game three plays fucking out. You were telling me about barking the ball. You go, this motherfucker's, he goes, here's how Watch. that way is. You called this two plays, you go, this guy's running in. He runs in, he gets pounded, but he gets it in the freaking end zone. You go, he's calling his own number. I mean, he was three plays ahead. ahead. I I'm knew telling it. you. That's how sharp I used to be with sports betting. That's the truth. Like, man. I could That's look a true at it story. and tell you. This was at his old fucking house, spaghetti meatballs, followed by many other things and hiding in closets <laughs> and <laughs> me being late for basketball. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I lived in the studio city. I lived right down the corner oh, here with the stripper. Yeah. And I was shooting basketball and I was coked up and we drank red wine. Oh. And then we got there at six in the morning and they're like, today you shoot. You're the second scene up. And every day I would just go in there and sleep. 
This is the day I came and gacked up to the gills that I had to fucking shoot basketball. <laughs> I didn't know my lines. I, they kept saying, step on your mark. I didn't know what a mark was. <laughs> I didn't know what cut was. Uh. Nothing. When they called me and they said, how do you want your name in the cut at the end of the movie? And I go, I made the movie. And they're like, yeah, you were great. I'm like, <laughs> I was pale. Somebody put the picture up today. I know, you oh. looked really young. Yeah, really That's young. Like, yeah, I remember that name, bro. Oh, please. Yeah. Shit, please. dude. I've done it. Yeah, but and what I was trying to say is at the end of your pitch to people, once I called Jimmy Schubert, I go, Jimmy Schubert, <clears throat> Pete Patello, Colorado Sports Advisors, listen, we discussed this before. I'm going two for two tonight. I got the to game in the total. You're a nickel better. You're going to walk away with 25 fucking hundred. Do me a favor. Grab the credit card. What's, what's the number? We're running out of time, Jimmy. At the end, at the, I give you a mental ear beating. If you make it all the way to the end, I always say to you, who are you betting? Just, just for curiosity. Right. What do you got tonight? And they'd say, Steelers in the over. No matter what they tell you, you always said, listen, you're on the other side. One of your bets is wrong. And nine out of ten. They go for the They bet. would tell me. If eight out of ten people gave me Miami, it was the other team that won. We're fucking morons as a, as a as a, a group. Yeah, that's why I love when people tell me they went four and zero and they did that, because you can't every week. You have to be in a season. You're gonna get six good picks. You're just not gonna know when to lay ten thousand on them. That's yeah. the magic. Yeah, that's the secret. That's the guy who makes when you, you hit it. When you hit it, you go. Any fucking moron could pick, go six for eight in a football season, bet twenty thousand a game, and you're still up. 130 for the year. Right? Dude, I know what you're saying. Do you understand me? So for you to bet every game, that, that, that's how you gamble. You gamble like a snake. You only fucking come out and you come right back and you take your 10,000 and you go home. And then they're, they're waiting <laughs> for your call next week, but you ain't gambling. You ain't that stupid. You're going to wait for that field. Yeah. Then you come again. That's the real fucking gambler, but... At the end of the conversation, I would always go, "Who?" You? And the next day, you would always lose at least one. If you lost two, I can't Dude, call you. I had a blackjack dealer in Reno, and I've been hanging out there all week and goofing off and back in the thing. And so I come out and go, "Hey, what's up?" And I throw out like three hundred dollars on the table, and I'm going fifty, you know, and I'm winning. And then he and he looks at me and he goes, "Are you gonna fuck around? Or are you gonna gamble?" And that was his way of saying, you ready? And dude, I started betting that shoe. I walked out of there with 18 fucking hundred dollars. Fucking threw him a hundred fucking tip. But he said, are you, are you fucking ready to gamble? Are you, he just looked at me. He was just kind of, are you going to gamble? Are you going to fuck around? I go, no, let's gamble. And I took that as, let's go. And dude, I went on front of that shoe. Got fucking 1,800. Walked the fuck out of there. And that was the end of it. But you're right. Never gave it back. But I mean... Yeah, you gonna gamble? What you are you still gonna... go to Catch a Rising Star there? No, no, that was that many was many years, years ago. Yeah, many. It's a many... fun place. Yeah, but I think I was. I think it was. Big... Yeah, yeah. No, they don't go after a certain limit. But they used to have an old. I would go up there and make. I would double the salary. I would make more gambling than the salary. Yeah. First of all, the the, the, the slot machines are from 1920. Jesus fucking handle those things. <laughs> you stay on there for 15 minutes, you win the fucking jackpot. And then on Saturdays, they'd have the money that spun around. Oh, yeah. And I'd go in there with the old coked up lint sweater. What, what the, You're attracting what, what shit like one of those what in with the What in there with the parachute pants? What are we oh, pocket please, unzipped? please, please. <laughs> I'd wear one of those jackets that Hasidic Jews wear. Everything sticks to it. Pennies, fucking lint, dollar bills. Those Hasidic jackets, they're built like that. They're a magnet for anything. Fucking coins, diamonds. They called them the Haredi, by the way. That's what they called. They called them, I was on over in Israel. They called those guys with the dark cats and the fucking big caps and the and the, the twirly things. What's the name? The tzitzi. They call them, they're called the Haredi. Haredi. Oh, the Haredi. Let me write that yeah. down. <laughs> and then, and then, they, no, dude, they're called the Haredi. They have like, like I, I'm not kidding. You. They have like ten kids. They have like they have huge families over in Israel. They're, they're, I'm not even joking. No, yeah, they don't believe in birth control. Yeah, it's the Haredi bunch. <laughs> it's the name of the name of the group. You're like, no, but they did. When you go to Israel, there's huge. There's like you know, I've never seen any. They got families with ten kids in them. They're all about like you know. It's amazing. How you feeling, brother? You okay? You I'm know, good. I'm really you super mind? high. You're not super high. I want you to talk to me. What's the matter? You weren't the same when I came in here. You got something on your mind. What is it? What? 
You acted all fucking half momoed up. Man. No, I've had a good day. If Adrian had a son, you'd be fucking Adrian's <laughs> son from Rocky. Look at you, you acted all momoed up. No, I'm just up. super fucking high right now. Do uh, you miss this? Fucking six days miss I haven't what? seen you. I missed you, cocksucker. I miss you too, buddy. You sit there at home like a fucking schmuck. Some guy came up to me and I, you please have to take it easy on Lee. I go call him. He's been home since Friday fucking morning. He hasn't left the house. <laughs> Let me take it easy on him. He's 26. Where were you just at? I was in love with Nick over at fucking Cleveland. Tremendous. Oh, dude. Fucking Nick, tremendous. God, dude, that's one of the... That fucking hamburger league, you would have gone crazy. You would have gone crazy. What did they have on it? The the meat, it's like 90 restaurants in the country that get USDA meat direct from fucking the United States. Yeah. Like the cuts of meat they get are off the fucking chain. Like he was, he took me in the bag and goes, look at this, the paint, the red. Oh, my God, Lee. You see like a Puerto Rican's pussy, like have like dark skin on the outside, but you look inside that hole, it's pink as death. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Lee, this fucking meat was <laughs> delicious. Dude, that whole club. Oh, I had an eight ounce patty with no because I wanted to taste the meat. I right? thought you were still talking about pussy. They gave me the Roma tomatoes, Lee. We forget. We give up sunshine and warm weather, but we miss out on the taste of meat. We miss out on produce. That's really good because the produce that's grown in California is tremendous. We just don't get none of it. Yeah. That gets chipped to Florida and everywhere else. That's amazing. Yeah, tell them what happened uh, for lunch with the Italian place. Oh, my God. I went to I went to this fucking place, right? It was 16 below. Right. You know, it's fucking always cold in Cleveland. So I go Thursday when I get there. I get there Thursday afternoon. I go for a walk in the neighborhood. It's like 5 degrees. I got to jump into a coffee shop. I got to join my pocket. You know, I can't smoke in the room. Uh. So I, I take the coffee as fake, and I go behind the coffee shop, but the coffee shop's connected to an Italian restaurant. I fucking dive. Right. People in there, you know, all fucked up. I go, I smoke a joint, right. back there, I put the, the half a joint in the window. You know, leave it for the mouse. Right. I roll another joint Friday, which you can't eat your meat. I was already set. I was going to go back to uh, the, the hotel and have a piece of salmon. Right. And I said, let me go for a walk, get my appetite, smoke a number. Well, I go behind the fucking, I get a coffee, and I go behind the thing, it's freezing. I go behind the spot, but when I walk past, I'm looking at the menu, and they got spicy, Sicilian-style calamari and shrimp over pasta. Oh, that's good. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, it sounds good. That. that sounds delicious. So I go around behind the building, I'm smoking this fucking, this dube, and all of a sudden, bam, the doors open up, and it's the kitchen manager and the black cook. They're like, man, we can smell that shit inside. That the... And the one guy looks at me and goes, Joey Diaz, God, they close that door. What are you smoking? And we start fucking smoking. I go, listen, what's going on with that spicy fucking Sicilian? <laughs> he goes, I'll make it special for you. I go, put it over whole wheat pasta, save the bread. Because he said to me, he goes, I got some crispy fucking bread I just got. Put some butter on that motherfucker. That's I the gave, best. I said, I gave up bread for lunch. Just hit me with whole wheat pasta and fucking water. And he threw me a tremendous salad. I bought them both beers. And I had this dish. How much? 16 bucks. 22. That's not bad. Two beers and a fucking dish? I couldn't finish it. Yeah. I couldn't finish it. I had to cheat and eat all the shrimp and the calamari. But think about that. You know how much that cost you here? It cost you 12 just for the fucking beer here. Yeah. You were saying you got one and got a sub and it was 20 something. What? Today? We went to yeah. whatever. And we got 26 for two subs a regular and a fucking foot long at fucking Jersey Mike's on a cookie. And two drinks was $26. Wow, and you got clams and shrimp and two mm -hmm. beers. And two beers for 20 fucking two. This <laughs> yeah, is what I'm man. talking about. This is what we give up by not living in the Midwest. We give up those, you know, going for the, It's like when you go to Houston, Texas, and you go eat Mexican food. Your head explodes, and you get the check. Unless if you go to Chewy's or something. Yeah. You know, something uh, Tex-Mex that Gentiles go to. But if you go to one of those things on Kirby, one of those Mexican places where they give you a cup with booze to open up with, the, the, the fucking platters are six ninety nine, and they give you nachos and the salad and the guy comes over with the fucking violin and plays music with the Mexican with the <laughs> green card you know you spent that's why more people go out to dinner in Houston, Texas than anywhere else in the fucking country yeah. because for $40 the family eats yeah that's great fucking family eats you know you gotta think of that dad that that's why I like I mean it's, you, you get, it's so funny you live here you operate here, but you know you hit the road. You go to Minneapolis. You go out for wow, it was cheap. It was like dirt cheap or whatever. Wherever you're at, you're at, and yeah. you're like, oh my god, I fucking get it. I fucking get it. You know, we got an interesting letter from some guy in a law school and the law, and he was talking about you know to talk to Lee and his girlfriend. I never thought about how they regulate medical school in California, but they don't regulate law school. 
and they, they, they want Latinos and blacks, they encourage you, we don't give a fuck what you do, get in there. Yeah. And they, they fucking have all these lawyers. Now they have an abundance of lawyers in LA, which what does it do? It brings the opening cost down. So instead of making 140 with the national averages for a guy out of law school, now they're making 60, 70, and they're fighting for their lives, a bunch of barracudas. It's like trying to sell weed in California being a lawyer. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's what's kept half of them alive at 200 a pop, go into a lawyer, open up, get look at the fucking licensing and shit like that. I mean, if I was a lawyer, I'd hustle. You got to hustle. I'm not talking about chasing them. You just got to hustle. You got to get out there, and you got to do what well, you got to do. Especially when you're getting started, you know, all the time. You know, if you, you develop your reputation, cases will come to you. But, I mean, you're right. You got to hustle out there. There's too many guys. I mean, that's why the world's so fucked, because it's run by lawyers, and lawyers make these fucking laws and have, you know, the, 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 the litigation... Uh, you know, in this country, it's fucking ridiculous because the lawyer lobby is so fucking powerful. I mean, they're the guys who run from the yeah, Imagine charging 400 an hour, 500 an hour. That's what they fucking charge. They get on the phone. That's a hundred dollar phone call. They charge you 15 fucking minutes. Yeah. Buck and a quarter. Buck and a fucking quarter a phone call, dog. For what? Fuck sports phone. So you motherfucking youths don't remember sports phone. You get your bill and it was $2,000 in the sports phone at a dime a call. How much was it a call? 49 cents a call. Yeah. And you'd be staying up all night to see if Hawaii won. Man, we need Hawaii to come through. That's the last game, motherfucker. We get Hawaii, then we go buy an eight ball. How's that? We'll leave it to life. What's up, Lisa? Yeah. What's going on? What plans you got for the week? What's going on with you? You're sitting there like a fucking struts, even though I love you. What's happening? I don't got any plans. I mean, we're doing this again this week. Okay. And uh, that's it. What are you doing with Mama this week? I know. No, she's going to Vegas with her cousin. To see what? For her cousin's birthday. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I'm not going, though. Fuck no. How'd you get out of that? They asked you, didn't they? Uh-huh. Oh, sure. They, they want to ask Daddy Warbucks to come and jump up and down with them. You said, fuck that. I'm yeah. a man's man. I can't go to Vegas right now. No, I'm going to have to share a room with two broads. What, am I crazy? I go to Vegas just to get my dick sucked and my balls licked like Biggie. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right or wrong? Who goes to Vegas with two broads to share a whole tarot room unless See? you're in the middle? I'm learning. Like this, like this. Fucking knobbing, whopping spit with the other one. Like a doctor. But you can't do that with Mexican chicks to have a fucking heart attack. <laughs> Nobody will bring that cousin, you know what I'm saying? But that's good. How'd you get out of it? What'd you tell her? I just, uh, it's just her cousin's birthday. I didn't want to. What are they going to do? Interrupt. I don't know. They're going to a couple shows. They're going to go eat. They're only there for like a couple days. They're just, they're just, it's a quick trip. I didn't want to be in the room with her cousin and. Like one, like no, we couldn't do anything. It's just those two, or it's a bunch. Yeah, of just them two. Oh yeah, you're learning. Nah, you ain't covering that. No, to go over there and be the fucking odd man. Plus, I just like to gamble, and I just I, with taxes coming up, I don't want to stupid gamble. shit. Yeah, they gotta want to yeah. do this and go to circuses and shit. You ain't got time to see a yeah, line. You're, you're a like, Jew, okay? You're gonna be footing out the bill. Yeah, fuck that shit. No, they're gonna go to clubs. It's crazy. I, like I would never wait in line for a club. Don't worry about nothing. Hopefully, fucking something will happen. And they'll never go back again. <laughs> Hopefully, Paul will call you at 2 in the morning and say, I'll never come back to this again. That's how you look. Oh, she will. That'll happen. Yeah, you go to Vegas. and yeah, Vegas isn't for everybody, but everybody thinks they belong no. at least once no, or twice. No, but I, believe it. I, I, did Vegas, I did Vegas right back when the fucking dunes were still fucking standing, and you're out there, and you got the, the fucking Sam and the Outlaws there. They hold you over for a third week because you're selling on every show. You go into the Olympic Guards every night, hanging in there, walking in there with Billy Idol. Oh, what? 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 And all the stink comes around. You get moved to the VIP room. What's the Olympic Garden? The uh, no, uh, strip club? Yeah, yeah, is strip that the big, big, big one? I don't even know. No, no. That's the, that's, that's the one. I mean, that's... Uh, that, is but, that still but, there? But, but, yeah, it's still there. But that's probably the last time I went to a strip club. You're there and... Hey, you come in at 4 o'clock in the morning. Hey, there she is. <laughs> you know, dude, back in the day, it was crazy. But I'm just saying... Yeah, I've done Vegas. Now I go to Vegas, and I let Eleanor Kerrigan and Steve Simone drag me to church on Sunday, going, all right. And then the priest comes out like Elvis. Dun, 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 dun. That's dun, dun, dun. crazy. Dude, they got a full size. Dude, last, I, when I went to Vegas, when I did big from yoga for four days in a row like a fucking nutbag, just to get away from fucking people, just not to get out there, I'm telling you. I was trying to, you know. I, anything but go hang out with, you know, that the, the, the masses. You know? you know, I probably have not been in a strip club. I am 52. <laughs> it's been years. years, years. <sighs> I'm going to be honest with you guys. The last time I walked into a strip club, it was probably 99 in Cleveland. At yeah. the Improv Across, they give you passes to go get free lunch. And you go in there and have a prime rib, and you're eating this fucking prime rib that looks like that fucking pink meat you're talking about. 
<laughs> Who the fuck wants to eat when some chick is dancing with flapjack titties? I think I went in there one time. And then in 98, I went to a fucking Toronto. And that was the last time I went AWOL in a strip club. That I had to go back to the club and get a draw and go back. Oh, really? Yeah, there was a chick that was letting me bite her pubic hairs and lick her clit and shit. She was beautiful. And every time she'd come to me, I just wanted to test. I'd bite her fucking pubic hair. And then one time, I just tongued her clit and she left it there. I said, how long are you going to be here till 2? I'm coming right back with a <laughs> box of Tic Tacs and a pocket full of cash. I came back and I ran over there. I was like 400 pounds. I ran to that Hollywood land. <laughs> Boris, the magician. That's when Boris had the fucking club with his Jew fucking cousins and shit. He had to sleep at the cousin's house in the basement. And he drove hookers around. He'd wake you up at 4 in the morning. I got one that got hit by a car. He's doing <laughs> She's running a discount. She'll suck your dick, but she's bleeding. I'm, you, th you guys think I'm fucking kidding you. You guys think I'm fucking kidding you. Fucking Boris's cousin. Listen, you went to Toronto and you had to stay there with fucking Jews till the end, Lee. Lee, they refused to pay for a hotel room. Three comics had said, we're leaving. So the one week at the one club in Toronto, you stepped, uh, you slept on top of the bar in a two-man fucking apartment with a key on your door and shit, and you, they gave you towels. They refused to play for a hotel. They refused. Then when you went to the other club, like an hour from Toronto, you slept at the aunt's house in the bas basement, but the cousin was retarded. <laughs> he was half retarded, but he drove hookers Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Yeah, nights. well, they did the, like, this is crazy. And, stuff, yeah. and he would knock on your door. Listen, I got one that says you'll suck your dick for half price. It was always a story, and you're like, listen, I'm only getting fucking 500 for the week. I gotta get back over the border. You weren't making any money. That's why the guy hired you. He, he hired MC. He hired MC slash features the headline. This is a nightmare. But the one night the guy brought a stripper in that had got beat the fuck up. The guy ran over with a car. She didn't want to go to the hospital. And he's like, you know, she'll suck your dick. She just needs fucking money to get bandages. I'm, I'm like, are you fucking? What did you need bandages for? <laughs> Dog sheep with the guy. <laughs> the guy beat her up and ran her over. Uh, dude, that's horrible. It was horrible. It's horrible. They, had a, they were fighting. I mean, and he was retarded, so he didn't even know what to do. He's like, I don't know what to do. Do I go to a pharmacy? <laughs> she had been beat up, and this chick still wanted to suck <laughs> dick. She looked like fucking gladiator after one of those beatings, and she still wanted to suck my dick for the small 20. Oh, like she wanted 60 for the night. It was a fucking nightmare. And I remember telling him. He Toronto, telling huh? Him. Yeah, he kept telling Is the gig him. still there? No. Boris had a locked door. Nobody goes to that shit. He was booking fucking slash MC features to headline. The only, you know who he fired? Danny Kelly. Fire him. He fired Danny Kelly. He fired a couple people. A couple people quit because the money was 600 a week, two weeks to headline. He kept you for two weeks. Dude, I used to do those coconuts gigs down in Florida. It was 125 a night. And, and you, you had to seat the fucking people. Yeah, yeah. You had to you had seat the people. You, you say, hey, come on in. Welcome in. I believe me. I just, you know. What's up, Lee? Look at you. Looking at the fucking screen like, you know. Yeah. Look I'm at us when high. we talk, cocksucker. You're not I am. high. You're not high. Well, you're not high at all. You're the fucking master of disaster. I've been telling you that for fucking years. You're a, you don't give yourself enough credit. That's why I fucking get pissed off at you. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, it's, just, it's some crazy. That's the last time I lost my mind at a strip club. But the best. One time when I was living in Boulder. Kathy's mother, Kathy, my ex-wife, the one who hates me. I was living with her sister and her husband. I was renting out the downstairs. And my wife calls, at the time she was my girlfriend, she calls me at like 9.30 and she goes, hey man, your friends just called you, Sabatino and Tommy Russo and this other guy. They flew into Denver Stapleton on a fucking two day. They, they left Jersey, went to Vegas. And then in Vegas they got coked up and they said, we're out here, we might as well go see Coco. And these guys had loot. Danny Bianculo. Danny Bianculo was one of those guys. Danny calls into the podcast. And <laughs> I take a fucking cab. I call them. I call them back at the airport. They're at the fucking airport. I got a pay phone. They're like, where are you? Blah, blah, blah. They go, take a cab. We'll pay for it. We'll meet you at the airport. I get to the airport. They left. They left like 200 miles with a fucking guy waiting for me. The guy wait. They gave him like 500 to wait for me and they to give me two. With a note, go to Shotgun Willie's. We go to Shotgun Willie's, they're in there, they got a whole table control. They're in there throwing hundreds, they each got an ounce of blow on them. I'm not fucking kidding you. I go, listen guys, I need a bump. We go back to the hotel room. 
They give me a few fucking bumps. We go back to Shotgun Willie's. I ate somebody's ass. Somebody sucked my dick. It was horrible. <laughs> we went back to the hotel and we got so paranoid. We hit the coke and the tissue paper things in the wall. Yeah. And the next morning they all got up and they're like, Cokes, we're leaving. Like they got out. You know, like when you wake up fucking in, in your reality. They yeah. were in Denver. After sleeping 12 hours. They were in Denver. They're like, how do we get to Denver? It's like, we're going home. Like, you want the blood? Like, no, keep it. <gasps> I go in there. It's like an ounce and three quarters. I call my wife. I go, listen, I got the girl. I go, I got an ounce and three quarters. Come get me. This is, this is before I got locked up. So this is 86, the beginning of 87. I, I call her up. They leave me like 200 bucks, these guys. I call her up. I go, can you meet me? At, I'm taking a cab to a cheap hotel. I take the cab to a cheap hotel. I call her up. She goes, I can't meet you. I can't go out there. But save some of the coke. We'll sell it. I had no money at the time, guys. And an ounce and three quarters, they left me one rock with a little bit of powder. They were like, this is the tail end of a kilo we bought two weeks ago. Like, these guys were crazy. Wow. Yeah. They give me the guy. check into this hotel, but I'm getting paranoid. And I'm looking out the window, and I see that every 10 minutes a car pulls in. And then another car pulls in. Another car pulls in. So now I'm getting paranoid. So I take a gallon of water, and I take one of the coke rocks, and I throw it in there to see how long it takes the rocks to dissolve. Now I'm hearing drills, and I'm hearing saws. Oh, shit. So in my mind, they're coming to the ceiling. So I start, <laughs> I start fucking snorting like there's no tomorrow. Lee, I'm doing bumps. To, I'm in the bathroom on, on my hands and knees doing coke. It's all over the bathroom floor. Finally, I got like an ounce left, and I dump it down the fucking toilet and flush it. I start doing the coke that's around. I look out there after eight, four hours later, I look out the window. It's an ATM machine like a bank with the people that go to make deposits. <laughs> I thought it was the FBI switching cars on me. Now I'm in front of the toilet for six hours. It was little yellow spots where the coke had just flushed and stick to the uh, side. I was had my hand in the toilet and I would take these things and put them in my nose. But then there was a gallon of water that I had thrown a coke rock in. Now I'm down, I'm jerking off, I'm, I'm you know, it's 12 hours you later. You start drinking that water? I forgot all about it. Ah. I start drinking the water and I lost my voice. I couldn't talk until it's like... Oh my God! It turned into like Mickey Mouse. And my girlfriend's calling me, what happened to the blow? And I'm... <laughs> Let me get some shout outs and get the fuck out of here in a couple minutes. Yeah. Jesus, man. Oh, my God. True stories, bro. Radcliffe Yates, <laughs> Cody Lerner, I love you, cocksucker. Rory Oliver, Jamil Haddad, Joe Varela. Don't make me find out your ISIS, Jamil. <laughs> <laughs> Hank Cuba, Justin Seeley, Greg and Lynn, I love you up there. I'm thinking about you. And listen, somebody in uh, Indianapolis gave me a great fucking picture of Oscar Robertson. Black and white, authenticize his autograph, fucking... Tr I mean, just the picture, I gotta get it framed and put it in the office. You didn't put a card in there with your name. Can you please hit me up on Facebook or on Gmail and talk to me? And there's something in there that you put in there so only you'll know. So, please, get back to me, my brother. It was a beautiful fucking present, all right? Don't forget, I'm at the Sacramento Punchline this Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And Thursday... March 19th, I need you guys to put your VCR, tell your grandmother, your priest, everybody to turn on Comedy Central, this is not happening. We need the fucking numbers, cocksucker. It's me and Ari alone, all right? Oh, nice. And you're where this weekend? I'm in Minneapolis, bro. Minneapolis. I'm the in the house mall. of fucking comedy there in the Mall of America, tremendous hotel. At that restaurant, they have the best mushroom barley cream soup that Dude. you will ever fucking have Dude. in your life. Dude, the Asabuco there, that little, oh, little, little joint, that, that little, little joint. Yeah, right it's, like, it's like tapas. It's freaking oh, great. Tremendous. And when you come back, if you tell them what you want at 8 o'clock, I'm going to come back at 12, have it ready for me. The guy will have it. I still got their cards. One of the bartenders there opened up his own place, and he goes, when you come back, I'm taking you up there. And they go, Anthony Spina fucking left me a message this week, beautiful man that he is, because I kept calling him. He's somewhere in fucking Beirut walking the hills. So, you know, these people go to a fucking other country and they walk and they turn their cell phone off. Here I am trying to call him and I couldn't get him and he finally sent me an email so he heard the podcast. He sent us his love. So, a shout out to my main man, Anthony Smith. These mushrooms hitting you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got the tail end. I got the giggles and shit. Well, let's turn off the lights and put on Animals, Lee. What do you think? And we'll sing. We'll put on some Pink Floyd. What do you think? Okay. You know, and just to see how it feels, Lee. You never did mushrooms. I'm down. Turn off the lights. Go ahead, put on Pink Floyd dogs. Dogs? 
Sure. Let's you want to see if we can do it live and we can put it on the TV? I'll do whatever you want to do. If you can put it on the TV, that even better. Show these fucking people what you're all about, Lisa. Yeah? You know, when you tell these stories, like, and the other time I lost my mind, I was at the fucking halfway house, Jimmy Schubert. This was my second time. Dude, man. You know, you tell me those stories, bro, and I cringe. I mean, you just talk about you. I mean, I've been in it. I mean, I'm so glad I haven't done it in a number of years. But I mean, you. I know that feeling where you're just oh, you just gotta go to fucking bed, dude. Get some sleep. Walk it off. Crazy shit, but man, her stories, bro. I just I cringe. I, I personally cringe because it just reminds me. I'm in me. the halfway house. I'm a month away from getting married. And I'm selling blow with two hands at the halfway What's the name of the band? Pink Floyd, you fuck. <laughs> Dogs. I'm selling blow at the halfway house. Everybody gets paid on Friday. Now, I'm at this house. Before you put dogs on Lee, I am. You know, I go to prison. I get out, guys. And when you go to prison, you learn all these fucking scams. And I got out and I ran them all. But the main money maker, I was selling blow to get married. But the main money maker, I was. So don't put it on you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm the not. main money maker was. Uh, Loan sharking to the Invix, because you had to pay your rent. That's how they got you. You had to pay your rent on Thursday. Nobody gets paid till Friday. So if you didn't pay rent on Thursday, you couldn't go out for the weekend. So they borrow the rent, so, pay the rent on Friday comes. So they would have to pay the rent two weeks in advance. They didn't make that type of money to go out those two weeks and then get a row going. You couldn't leave the house unless you paid the rent. So I would go up to them and say, "Listen, seventy-five dollars. I give you seventy-five for one hundred four till Friday and they all went for it nobody ever gave me a hard time 75 for 104 for 104 on Friday so I'll pay the rent for you the 104 juice. I'm, gonna give, had, I'm gonna give it to you for three points over to Vic because I, I had like 30 it. 40 Fuck. fucking guys plus I had guys borrowing a nickel for 750 God, for 10 payments of 75 dollars I was just you know, I was at my, I was, I was buying stolen stuff. I was getting Rolex watches. And this is in, the, this is in the halfway. I'm in the BCTC in Boulder, and I'm running this fucking. I'm running. I'm putting coke in the ceiling, with a scale. And I remember one day the council was in, and the bag went everywhere. And there was little coke rocks all over the carpeting. And she's like, "What's going on with your ceiling?" And we're there dying. If she picks up one of these things and tastes it, she's gonna go fucking bananas. But why would somebody normal pick up something white and taste it? But I'm at the halfway house. I'm, I'm five months. I got out of I got out of I got out of prison in February. It's March, April, May, June, July. I got them all conned. They got me on level four, which means I could come in at midnight. I could drive, and I don't have to tell them where I am every hour. And I got weekend furloughs, and they call the house where I'm furloughed, and then they test me for alcohol and drugs when I come back. I got them conned. I'm probably making six, seven, eight grand selling Mitsubishi Eclipses. And I'm probably making another five or six slinging coke. And half the coke I was stealing. And this is in the halfway This house. is in the halfway You haven't house. even been fully integrated into society no, yet. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm, I'm driving. Yeah, you know, great. I'm doing the whole thing. I would wake <laughs> up in the morning. I would run two miles. That's how I got bursitis in my heels. I'd come back. I'd change. i go to the Harvest. i get a Swiss granola and the Harvest iced tea. And I'd drive to 104th and Thornton. That was my day. Bam. And I'd be there, the best fucking salesman. And I'd go home. And I'd weigh out coke, and I had people waiting for me, and I'd have, and then again, if a gra half a gram was 50, they're in prison. They know that you have to pay. So I would charge them $10 for the coke extra. You want to front it? That's good, but that's 60. No problem, bro. Give me three grams. They would pay because they just wanted to have it. And one night, I got like a fucking half ounce, and after, I didn't have to be back till midnight. It's 10 o'clock. I go to 104th and Thornton, but I go to one of those places where it's, no, you bring your own booze, and, but they're, top, they're completely naked. I hook up with a Korean girl. I got a couple lap dances. And next thing you know, I go, you do blow. She's doing lines. Oh, my God. After that, I'm eating her ass. Soy sauce everywhere. I, I <laughs> sucked her pussy fucking dry. She had fake tits. She had blonde hair like streaks in her hair. I tore this fucking Chinese chick up to pieces, man. I remember just jerking off the whole drive home. Like, the pussy was so good, you're just jerking off all over my suit. I was... I was coming on my shirt and wiping it and tucking it back in my pants. That's how good the pussy was. I was hitting it. The, I gave her all the coke. I went home with bunny rabbit ears. I gave her all the coke. All I had left was bunny one. rabbit ears. Oh, yeah. Both pockets were empty. She sucked me dry, but I didn't give a <laughs> fuck. I sucked up fucking Korean pussy for fucking an hour. I got back to the halfway house at 5-2. I remember pulling up and all the Invicts in the windows jumping up and down. like Because you made it back. Because I made it back. Ah. And I had coke in the trunk. And I remember ah. they were always searching. I'd bring the coke in like nothing. 
this is just a different fucking world, man. And then yeah. now, look at this. Now we're fucking legit people. <laughs> hit it, Lee. Hit it. Put it. Put it. Right. Let me go up to the guitar solo. Go like to a minute. You want to hit the lights? No, no. Go to the minute, Dad. We just want to see what you got. Okay. So, great story, by the way, man. Fucking tremendous shit. <laughs> you sit there, you get goosebumps. Hey, yeah, we're still on the right side of the grass. Been through all that shit, you know what I mean? Fuck. Kick it up. Speed it up, Lee. The one minute. Without thinking. A little more. 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 Right there. A camera on the fucking screen, Lee, or yeah. What? Oh, shit. it's not even moving, nothing's happening. That's the cover of that fucking album. Look at the pig flying over the fucking shoots. Look at it, looks like Cleveland. Look at that fucking place. Break out one of those cookies. I got one over here. Let's eat some fucking cookies and shit. Let's see the devil turn. <laughs> if we're gonna go deep, let's go fucking deep. It's over. It's Monday night here, Los Angeles. The fucking church, we're making it happen, cocksuckers. Look at Lee, he looks like a pilot, like he's about to <laughs> land the fucking plane in, in the Hudson River. Look at him. It was David Gilmore's birthday maybe three or four days ago, the guy that's playing the guitar on this. This to me is one of the best fucking solos. I could feel his fucking soul. Kick it up, Lee. Kick it up. Kick it up. You're killing me. Oh shit, Lee. I just wanted you to know, motherfucker. I can feel those mushrooms fucking letting me know. I still got another one, guys. You can't walk on one leg, you know. Can't fly on one wing, man. Fuck it. Ain't nobody doing nothing tomorrow. <laughs> Lee, you in, cocksucker? Uh, no. <laughs> sure you are. Don't worry about nothing. Here uh, we go, Lee. Another mushroom? Sure. Are you fucking kidding me or what? Now, if we were really, really tripping right now, like heavy-duty acid tripping, yeah. you're done. This is sucking you in. And his first line right there, when you fucking feel it, it's all over. Like, you, your head is fucking scrambled eggs after this. Listen to the line. You hear that bass drum? That's your heartbeat. Tremendous. Yeah. Fucking tremendous. Nice. They must have fucking say after that, cocksuckers. Thank you for coming out to the church. Jimmy Schubert, you're at Minneapolis this week? Yeah, I'm in Minneapolis in the Mall of America, man. And then next week. Then I'm you? going I'm going to do the Madhouse in San Diego. I like going down there to do that club. And then I'm going to be, uh, then I'm hitting Vegas. I'm doing Brad Garrett's room. And then I'm closing off uh, with the new hour. I'm going to be doing it at uh, Flappers in Burbank there on the 2nd, 3rd, uh, the 3rd and 4th of uh, April. April. Yeah, okay. so I'm going to Give a shout out here to get some people done. Oh, right. man, are you kidding me, dude? I'd love it, Joey. Thank it's you, great bro. seeing you again, man. Oh, Thanks please. for having no, me on, dude. Around here at the church. Get, get a little crazy. It was a little unorthodox tonight, but fuck it. 
That's why you could hang out with us. If not, you could watch fucking Eyewitness News with Diane. Yeah. What's up with you, Lisa? What do you got crack a I'm really fucked up. Good, good. That's what they want you to do. That's all I got crack a right well, I'm now. I'm happy you fucking did this tonight. I'm happy everything is all right. Well, that, look, that's pretty cool. Like you, it's just you and Ari on that show. Yeah, it's very. Good. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see what they what they kept in because I was there when they were. When, when, when is that again, Joey? When's that show on? Next Thursday night. This is not happening. It's the season finale, so it's just two of us. And I tell a story about this lady who took care of me after my mother died. It's it's weird how you go to these parties and people tell you your friends, and when you die, I'll see people that I know are mutual, and they won't even bring shit up. And I'm waiting for them to go. Hey, I remember. It's like when you see Carl LeBeau, after you have a drink, yeah, yeah. come in with Carl, you bump into him, he tells you a different fucking story. But yeah. It's like when you bump into Lenny Clark. Now. Yeah. After about 10 minutes, he'll go, remember that time in Chicago, we're yeah. open off for yeah. Sam? Yeah. So, uh, what was I talking about, Lenny? <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, what was I talking about? <laughs> you were talking about, uh, you bumping the guys, get their stories, I don't know. <laughs> Me neither, I don't know. That shit. But, oh, this is not happening, and, uh, you know, I'll tell you that they were good friends, but you know, it, it, beside that, some people you'll see and they won't mention Sam, and you know they were tight with Sam. At the end of the night, you you go back to your room and go, that was weird, like he doesn't exist. I'm the type of guy if I had a good friend, I honor that. Person. Oh man, are you kidding me, dude? Let me tell you something, dude. He put so many cool moments in my life, and I go, I, you know, I, it was a lifetime ago, man. He's been dead 23 years, but man, it was a great time it in was my a life. Great time, I don't, I, man, I look. And you some, learned about comedy. And I learned about comedy from one of the fucking best. And you're doing it at the fucking top of your game. And you're on a bike. You're touring through America. And you, you get the outlaws of comedy. And you're living this. Dude, it was amazing. And to get from there to here. And to finally figure it out for myself. And to start to be doing that. that for, you know, it, it, there's just. It's a long journey. But it's worth every step of it. And it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, I, I believe I find myself thanking God every day. That, you know, you're still, still doing it, you're man. You're still doing it. But it's funny how I. This lady was a friend of my mom's who my mom helped out in 1950. When my mom died in 1979, this lady made a promise to my mom that she was going to take care of me. And she took care of me for six fucking years, pretty much, you know, mm. from 79 uh, to 84. She gave me 200 a week, and then it became something. After, like, three years, I would just say, give me an eight ball of Coke, I'll sell it. Because she sold Coke on 113th and 5th Avenue. Mm. And she was a great lady, and I love her, and I fucked her up at the end, and I always, it was a guilt thing for me, that's why yeah. I told the story. So, right. you know, Ari does those storyteller shows, hopefully this is the second season, we'll get you on, I'm sure. You're oh, great, great, man, I love Ari. Or whatever. Yeah. Ari's doing great, they got the fucking billboard. Lee, What's up, wake up, snap out of it, I don't sucker, like... look at the shape of you. Yeah. I love you guys, we'll see you Wednesday wait, wait. or tomorrow night or whatever the fuck. Oh, fuck, oh, oh fuck. <laughs> Oh, shit. That's how stoned I am on the mushrooms. I forgot to talk about my favorite motherfucking people in the world, my sponsors. <laughs> Let's open up with fucking honor, okay? For example, today, I had it. Today's my upper body, and but today I wanted to try shroom tech. So I said, I'm going to see how I feel. This guy doesn't really want you. He wants you to do cardio opposite your weightlifting schedule. So if you yeah. lift in the daytime, he wants you to do cardio at night opposite two times a week by itself. Sure, sure, if, you have, if you have a fucked up schedule... He doesn't mind if you do the cardio after your workout. So today's a heavy workout. I have to do heavy benches. I right. did benches for like sets of four and five. I got right. a spotter. Then I did a, a close grip bench presses. Then I did fucking bent over rows heavy with 135 just because I'm, I'm an older guy. Right. And for me, that's fucking heavy. But you have to do five sets of six, and I added five pounds and ten pounds. And then you have to do pull downs. You have to do shrugs. You have to do upright rows. You have to do curls and tricep extensions, then you do a bunch of sit-ups. It's a big day. Yeah, I put a big day. I took a 15-pound weight and just did a bunch of fucking sit-ups. And then after that, I said, fuck, I might as well do the, the fucking cardio thing. I did 40 minutes. I burnt a lot. Dog, that fucking thing. At 20 minutes, I had burned 250 fucking calories doing 20 seconds flying. And I reached all the way to 10. The 10.1. 10, 10, 10 what? 10.1 speed. Like, you know, you go like... Oh, four, I don't look at the speed. I went all the way up to the top and then back to... you. So you do 20 seconds at yeah. all you can, then 40 seconds of 3.2 yeah, or whatever. I got, yeah, I got to make myself do that shit on the road all the time. But yeah. I did it with Shroom Tech. Oh, yeah. That Shroom Tech Dude. from fucking on it gave me some tremendous... You know, when I left there after 40 minutes, I can be honest with you guys. Today, I'm not sore. And I walked home. I walked there and back. And I still had some energy. Shroom Tech's a fucking tank. 
you know, take it from I, me. I, I got no fucking cardio at all. Dude, I take the whole package. Yeah. I, I love that product. That's a great I, fucking I, product. You know what? I'm a comedian on the road. They make these packets. They make the day packet. And the yeah, day yeah, packet yeah, yeah, yeah. Total primate care. Total primate care. Dude, I'm telling you, man, that stuff is great. You I feel swear fucking about, good. Yeah. And when you're flying and you're moving around a lot, you usually you lose minerals when you fly. There's radiation on the planes. They got some good shit. Go to honor.com right now. Save 10%. Open up with the Alpha Brain. Open up with the Primal Care package. Do what the fuck you want. Get 10% off. Use the code word church. Boom! There you go. C H U R C H. In case you're fucking stupid. I need for you to get the 10% off. <laughs> also, they got the stay on it program where they mail it directly to your house. No offense if you are fucking a momo. <laughs> Iron Dragon TV for all you martial arts enthusiasts. The martial arts I'm sure movies, they don't take offense to that. Who gives a fuck where they take offense? This is the church bro, of what's happening. That's now. right, bro. You can't take a joke, take a shot. Or remember, Jesus was a Jew. Anyway, and he made a comeback in three days. We you called me that. We, we talked early, and then you called me back at like 10. And, we're, and as soon as I picked up, I went, hey, buddy. And you went, remember, Jesus was a Jew. And then you just said it for like, it was like a 30 minute, 30 second conversation. You just hung up. Yeah, sure. These people forget. Everybody thinks Jesus was a Catholic. There's no fucking way. They say that to you to make us feel guilty. We work from strength. The church of what's happening now works from strength. Jesus was a Jew. They killed him because he kept winning at poker. <laughs> okay. And then they took him down. They killed him. And he made a comeback in three days. He would have made been two, but they broke his foot. And that's the only reason he could push the fucking rock. And then what did he do? He came back and he disappeared. That's a Jew, though. Catholics don't. They sit around. They go to church on Sunday. <laughs> they eat the cookie. They feel fucking good. Let's crack open that peanut butter. Go ahead, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> you want to eat a cookie, Lee? <laughs> I you know, you to, I wait, want, wait. I want, I want to, to point something that. out. Well, you know that you're too high when Joey Diaz goes, no, no, no. No, no, I don't, no, want, I don't want, want him to open that one. I want him to no. take another road. I got one here. I yeah. Got, I got a bag of anarchy shit right here. I, I know a, you do. I got an anarchy peanut butter fucking cookie that'll fucking kill you. You understand me? Anarchy is fucking rocking and rolling. There's 140 milligrams uh, of animal THC. We'll split this three ways. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, I was talking to some guy last night. He said he had one of those... Hard c candies that were like five milligrams each. And I was like, five milligrams. And I was like, if that does anything to you, not what you. what's going on with what? It's like, like the edibles Joe Rogan gave you. Nothing happened to you. Yeah, they were a little nothing light. Happened. Nothing, nothing. You want to do this last mushroom tablet? No. Death? What do you think? What do you think, Lisa? We cut this three ways just out of I'm respect. cool right now. Thank you. What, what do you mean you're cool? What do you got to do tomorrow morning? Huh? How <laughs> <laughs> dare you guys? Iron Dragon TV. Listen, UFC is great. Bellator is great. But sometimes you want to see the origins of this shit. Go to Iron Dragon TV. They're a Roku channel. Tremendous fucking movie streaming at all times. The Jet Li. I mean, we could sit here for fucking hours and tell us what they got. You know what? Forget that shit. Go take a look for yourself. Why are you fucking around? You want to get into classic martial arts? You've been thinking about it. You don't know where to start. You like going to Chinatown. But you're scared, this is where you start. <laughs> Iron Dragon TV. They fully don't fuck around. Plus, he's giving you two movies off the cuff for free. We got an earthquake here. What the, what's the code over there? Joey. Joey, get two free fucking movies from Iron Dragon TV today. It starts today, right now. Go get two fucking movies. Take a look at what they got. They got all types of little martial arts movies, current stuff, old stuff, classic stuff. You're wasting your fucking time on the other shit watching dumb fucking movies like that chef that this guy recommended. I didn't Nailed recommend that Nailed in life for all your fucking <laughs> vapor. Yes, you, you did. No, no, you, you get Child. me a chef who does martial arts then I can watch it on that network. Even that, listen, martial arts couldn't help that fucking movie. Okay? <laughs> I, if they would have killed the chick and stabbed her in the heart. And stuck a fucking tit out. You couldn't say that scene with a martial arts knife there. Nailedinlife.com for all your vapor <laughs> and oil needs. They got the best vapor pen in the fucking market. They're great guys. Lifetime guarantee just if you mention the church. Go there right now and put one in the box. 20% off your first order. Oh, why are we even talking shit? Hit e cigs. The best fucking electronic cigar out there right now. Hands fucking down. You know why? Because you get 1,200 fucking puffs. For sixteen fucking dollars, you go to Seven Eleven, you're gonna buy nine, you're gonna pay nine dollars, and you're gonna get three puffs, and it's gonna taste like a fucking yam's foot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It tastes like a little fucking dough cheese. Yeah, you know, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Drag your fucking ass. Oh, <laughs> you, you going out of show? Go to six dot com right now. <laughs> This is the best they got. Zero, that's a, that's eight, a, 16, and 24 milligrams. And <laughs> they, all, they also have a cigar that'll rock your fucking world. You go to Atlantic City and give everybody cancer. Do what the fuck you want. <laughs> right. that's I don't give a fuck. Hitty6.com. What's the code? Joey's Church. Joey's Church. Get 20% <laughs> off your first order, you dirty cocksuckers. And that's because I love you. Where are you going to be?
We're going to be Sacramento, and don't forget, this is not happening, and Jimmy Schubert's going to be where? At the House of Fucking Cards in Minneapolis. At the House, at the house, of, house of Comedy. <laughs> the House of Comedy. On the level <laughs> four of the Mall of America. They want to call that, the they want to call that Mall of Somalia. You go to that fucking first floor. Or as I like to call it, Soft Target. I'll be at the Soft Target. They're going to blow that place oh, up. Dude, yeah, That's the place wait they till next. Go to. Wait till the week after I'm oh, there. i got to go in October. I, gotta I was tell my just wife, there. I was just My there. wife's going to tell me she wants to go. Listen, it's off. They, that's the first place Target. Ice is targeted. Yeah. They're going to take over the mall. Bruce Willis is too fucking old. He can't save us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just want to yeah, watch that. Paul Blart's coming out with Mall Cop, too. Oh, He'll Jesus be busy Christ. at the re- premiere. Let me tell you something. That movie bombs. I don't even want to know what's going to happen. Now. That's going to be ugly. Poor fucking Kevin James. <sighs> Poor Kevin James. I love him like a brother. But he's got to do more shit. He's 